Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor as Pro-Am Sports presents the 76th annual meeting of the Minnesota Golden Gophers and the second-ranked Michigan Wolverines. Hi, everybody. This is Larry Osterman at Michigan Stadium. It's the final tune-up for next week's encounter against the Ohio State Buckeyes at Columbus. I'm Larry Osterman along with Skip Mackles. This is a game that the Wolverines cannot overlook. It is a must-win situation to set up the uh, match with the Buckeyes next week. Well, there is a tendency to look ahead, but I don't think Bowl allows his teams to do that. So you'll see a fired-up Michigan football team today. The Wolverines have utilized a pretty good balance this year offensively with a passing game and the ground attack. And a guy that really came out of the woodwork to ma help make the passing game work, a fellow from Battle Creek, Kenny Higgins. Yeah, he had to wait three years for his opportunity, but he has taken advantage of it this year. He has 28 catches, which leads Michigan's football team. On third down, they like to go to him. The big question with this young man, Larry, is that he has another year of eligibility left. Will he go to law school or will he be on the football field next year? Now, he is a, quite an academician. 4.11 is his grade point average on a four-point scale. Not too bad. Well, defensively, Michigan has improved with each passing week. And a former uh, star, a Big Ten candidate last year, won all conference honors, has a chance to do it again this year, Andy Moeller. He is, the, he is their coach on the football field. Whenever they need a big play, he's there. He's the man that makes it all work. A three-year starter, he's having an All-American year. As far as the University of Minnesota is concerned, they got off to a very fast start in the Big Ten, but they've lost their last two encounters. They're now four and two. Ricky Foggy, a young quarterback out of South Carolina, has done a pretty good job for them, although his statistics may not indicate that. Well, you know, it seems like we've been calling this young this man's uh, number many, many years right now. He's only a junior yet. He does a lot of things well. He runs the option real well, and you're going to see a lot of that today. He's throwing the ball better. He's a really a, a great athlete. Well, the Golden Gophers like to go for the long bomb on occasion. That, of course, will cut into statistics as it has for a foggy. A great surprise on this Golden Gopher team this year comes at the tailback slot. A freshman from Rochester, Minnesota, is their leading rusher, Daryl Thompson. Darrell is having an unbelievable year for a freshman. He's already rushed for over 1,000 yards. He has 10 touchdowns, 7 by the rush, 3, three in the air. Uh, he's just an all-around great back, and when it's all said and done, he will hold a lot of Minnesota's records. Should be a great football game. We invite you to stay with us. The Wolverines and Golden Oakers coming up next on Pro-Am Sports. Pro-Am Sports coverage of College Football 86 is brought to you by Highland Superstores. Highland, everything you never expected from an appliance store with everything you need to make your sports viewing more enjoyable. By Stroh's and Stroh Life. Now you're talking good times and Stroh's is spoken here. And by your neighborhood True Value Hardware Stores. More than just a name, it's their way of doing business. This is Pro-Am Sports, Michigan's cable sports network. The Little Brown Jug is at stake this afternoon as the Golden Gophers from Minneapolis are in town to take on the Michigan Wolverines. Minnesota has not beaten Michigan since 1977 when the Gophers upset the then number one ranked Wolverines 16 to nothing in 1977. Since that time, Michigan has dominated the series. It's a cloudy, cool afternoon in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The wind blowing out of the southwest. Humidity at 70 degrees, 70 percent, 35 degrees, the game time temperature. Forecast cooler and cloudy throughout the afternoon. What does this game mean? Well, it means a whole lot to the University of Ohio State 10 and 0 and for Minnesota a very big game the Gophers currently in third place with a 4 and 2 win loss record in the Big Ten the Michigan coach Bo Schembechler looked at the game this way I think they're uh, uh, as he said 10 of 11 starters on defense we thought they'd be a tremendously tough defensive team and offensively when you have this new running back Thompson and Ricky Fogey, we've always been uh, pressed by him. Uh, so I think it'll be a tough football game. Michigan and Minnesota kickoff coming up, and we'll have it all for you in just a moment on Pro-Am Sports. 
Larry Osterman and Skip McCult at Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor. Full house, final home game of the 1986 season for the Wolverines, who won the toss of the coin, elected to defer the decision until the start of the second half. Michigan will be kicking off. This is Pat Boone's to do the booting for the University of Michigan. And it'll be Donovan Small and Daryl Thompson as the deep men for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. They'll be defending the goal to our left. That's the North goal. And we're ready, and here's the run-up by Moons, and the kick is off. Handled by Thompson at the goal line. Starts out to the 10, cuts to his left at the 15, and he is dumped at the 18-yard line. Daryl Thompson, the freshman from Rochester, Minnesota, returning the kickoff. Abrams making the tackle for the University of Michigan at the 19-yard line. In the backfield for the Gophers, Thompson, Richardson, Otto is the tight end, the flanker is Jason Bruce, and Mel Anderson is the split end. Up front is Norris Wilson, along with Paul Anderson, Ray Hitchcock, Troy Wolkow, and Jim Robbins. The first play from the line of scrimmage. A receiver wide to the right, eye formation. Bruce is flanked to the left. Michigan showing a four-man front, foggy rolling out to the left. Looks to the sideline, throws upfield, complete at the 40-yard line to Bruce, and he has dropped at the 42-yard line. A big gainer for the Golden Gophers. Heron made the tackle for the University of Michigan, but it's a gain of about 22 yards. Absolutely so here. we got Foggy coming out, rolling to his left. Uh, Michigan is playing his own right now. Linebackers did not get proper drops, and that, that is why Bruce was open. Well, at the hash mark on the far side, Foggy has a flanker wide to the right. The left end is tight. Foggy switching signals now at the line of scrimmage. Turns, gives to his fullback, Kevin Wilson, and he is absolutely drilled at the line of scrimmage. Hit initially by Andre McIntyre, who is currently number two in the total tackles for the University of Michigan. He has 42 this year. There are Foggy's totals. He's a junior from Waterloo, South Carolina. He has thrown for over a thousand yards in each of his three seasons at Minnesota. He has gotten better throwing the football. That was one of the knocks he got against him early in his career that he couldn't throw the football. But he has done a much better job of that. Second down and nine and a half yards to go. They're showing the wishbone. This pip with a receiver wide to the right. That's Craig Otto. That's the long side of the field. Big hole for Wilson. He's the 40, a flag is down, and Wilson is hauled down from behind at the 33-yard line. But there's a flag back at the line of scrimmage. And well, the penalty it, may be against Michigan. Excuse me, Larry, you are right. It's going to be Michigan offside. He'll probably decline this. Right now, that wishbone uh, is in a very, very effective, very effective offense. We look at him, there's the fullback getting the ball. He breaks through the line, almost runs away for six right here. Good job tackling. Once again, Michigan was offsides. Danny Gant making the tackle. A big gainer on uh, two of the three plays run by the University of Minnesota. And the linebackers for the Wolverines, Willingham, Muller, McIntyre, and Dieter Heron. Up front, Messner, Harris, and Kolkitzma. Another first down for Minnesota's Foggy rolls to his left. Looks, throws downfield, and it's overthrown. It was intended on the far side of the field for Jason Bruce. Garland Rivers defending against it, but thrown too long, and it falls incomplete, bringing up second and ten. The same exact play they opened the game with that time, but Michigan did a better job of covering it. The backs did an excellent job. They were in the zone once again. Linebackers got a proper job that time. It was very hard. Had to be a perfectly thrown ball to get in there. There's the secondary for the Wolverines. Rivers, Campbell, Ivan Hicks, and David Arnold. Second down and 10. Again, it's the wishbone. Foggy looking at a five-man front for the Wolverine. Long count. Foggy again to the fullback, Wilson. And the attempt at 25 may have gotten inside the 25-yard line for the Gophers. So Minnesota doing a good job in mixing its plays. Andy Muller making the tackle on Kevin Wilson, who is averaging almost six yards per carry. He has three carries this afternoon for 34 yards. That's 10 plus. 
But right now, it's Michigan's responsibility defensively that each person picks up one of the options. Right now, they are not picking up the fullback. The responsibility usually is of the defensive tackle. John Herman has gone in at that position for the University of Michigan. Boggy turns. Again, it's to the uh, fullback, and that's about a yard or two. Billy Harris marked his progress to the 22-yard line. Harris made the tackle, but it is another first down. Well, this is what I was just talking about right now. Here's the tackle coming down. We got Billy Harris also there, right there. That is their job when you're playing against the wishbone. Their first responsibility is to make sure that the fullback does not get through the line of scrimmage. Ron gets in at the fullback slot, replacing Kevin Wilson as Minnesota comes to the line of scrimmage with a first down. A flanker wide to the right is Carter. And a pair of receivers wide to the left that's the long side of the field. Foggy had a little trouble retreating from the line of scrimmage. There are flags down. And we'll see what the infraction is. Well, there's a little mix-up on the exchange. Looked like there was illegal procedure that time. Uh, what happened was that the center did not snap the ball up quickly enough, and the offense was already on gear, but Foggy did not have the football. It cost Minnesota five yards. And will be first down at 15 for the Gophers. And Larry, I don't know if it's because of nervousness or what, but it seems that teams commit more penalties inside to 20, inside to 25, than when they are in the middle of the field. Well, let's take a look at it once again. You see that they're already set, and there's the snap. A count late. It's first and 15 now for Minnesota. Foggy changing the play at the line of scrimmage, shouting up and down the line. He better get it underway. Does, and he is going to drop for a loss back at the 32-yard line. Racing through is Andre McIntyre. Looked like he was untouched, and he absolutely drilled Ricky Foggy and dropped him for a loss. Well, as you can see, Foggy has changed the play at the line of scrimmage. What he doesn't see is McIntyre coming from the back side. He had the proper play called. He changed it at the line of scrimmage. It was going to be a pitch to Thompson. Just didn't get out of the quarterback position fast enough. It'll be second and 19. Mel Anderson goes wide to the left. Jason Bruce is set as a wing to the right. As Minnesota comes to the line of scrimmage with second and 19. Foggy back to throw. Screen pass, drop. Well, it was supposed to have been a screen pass. There was nobody around the intended receiver, Jason Bruce. That wasn't Bruce. That was Daryl Thompson, who was the intended receiver, and he just dropped the ball. Boggy is one for three, 22 yards. Well, we have some excitement already on the sidelines right now. Uh, yes. what, they what they try to do, well, right here we are taking a look at the little brown jug. Third and 19. Minnesota had been moving with no problem. Suddenly in big trouble. Foggy trapped behind the line. A flag is thrown. He comes down the sideline. He's cut down at the 22. Well, we may have a clipping call or a hold. It looks like it's going to be a hold back at the 41-yard line. And this will be an interesting decision for the Wolverines to make now. This will be an interesting decision. I would think you'd have to take the penalty to take him out of field goal range. Boggy's statistics for the season. He completed just five passes last week against Wisconsin. Well, Foggy is not as effective when he has you at his disadvantage, meaning throwing the ball on first down. When it's third and long, uh, he's not as effective throwing the football. He looks more to run than down the field, as you could see. Official talking to Andy Muller now of his options that he has on this particular play. Uh, if he chooses to decline the penalty, the ball beyond the 21-yard line, bring up about a 38-yard field goal. So I think that they would accept the penalty. It'll be walked off back to the 47-yard line. Larry, right, once again, as we watch the official make the call, uh, on a, a penalty stopped to drive. The Golden Gophers were on their way. It looked like to scoring at least three points. They had great field position. And once again, a silly mistake. The ball not being snapped properly has caused them to go in the opposite direction. 
their second penalty in this drive which looked like it was going to be a highly successful one. Michigan putting a lot of pressure on Foggy in addition to the penalties. And here they come again. He unloads. It's caught on the near side by Otto and he is dropped at the 47 yard line for another big loss as Andy Muller came up field along with Peter Heron and Minnesota which had a highly successful drive moving. They had a first down at the 22 yard line shoved all the way back to their own 46 yard line. We'll have to punt the ball on fourth and 41. Tony Gant is back to do the punting as Brett Herbel gets a good snap big rush and a nice punt. Gant retreats back to his eight comes to the sideline and goes out of bounds at the 14 yard line. Shoved out of bounds by fours and Michigan will have the ball for the first time this afternoon. The defensive unit gets a nice round of applause as it comes from the side. Giving up big chunks of yardage to Minnesota initially but then a penalty and then some heavy pressure plus another penalty and again more pressure forces Minnesota to give up the ball. Those are the backs and receivers that Michigan will start with in its first possession. McCurtry is sent as a wing to the right. Harbaugh gives to White. He's into the middle. Stopped after a gain of a couple. Steve Thompson made the tackle for Minnesota. They'll spot the ball at the 17-yard line. Those folks up front, Huser back in the lineup now with James Vitale, Mark Hammerstein, and John Elliott powering the paths up front, the big guy. That is a good group. There's Harbaugh's statistics for the season. He's averaging 218 yards passing per game. Tom Wilfer's into the ball game now. He's set as a fullback, McMurtry in motion. Harbaugh back to throw on second down. He's throwing long. It is too long. Intended for Paul Jokic. An interesting play in that Bo Schembecker is not the big advocate of the long bomb, but on second down, Harbaugh unleashed. Well, I think it's a it's a great play. For one thing, it stretches the defense right now that Minnesota does know that Michigan has the capability of going downtown, but until you do it, they play defensive. They defensively they play a little conservative until it does happen. Right there, it did happen, and uh, right now it's it's a great help to Michigan's offense. Those are the linebackers for the Golden Gophers as Michigan comes to the line of scrimmage with third and six. Harbaugh looking at a four-man front back to throw. See some daylight. Comes out to the 20, dive to the 22. Maybe short of a first down. He will be at the 22-yard line. Official timeout. Official was injured. He's hobbling off to the uh, Michigan side of the field. Uh, looks like he banged up his left knee or ankle. So time is out on the field. 9-12 left in the first quarter. It's a scoreless game. You're watching Pro-Am Sports. To dress up any room, try the quality of stylistic vinyl tile by Armstrong. This no-wax Armstrong tile looks like real brick, wood, or ceramic. It's easy care, easy to install, and easy to pay for. Right now, Stylistic is on sale at Builder Square for only 64 cents per tile. When it comes to great floors, Builder Square and Armstrong have it covered beautifully. A square deal is right for you. Thursday, November 20th, Kronk Boxing returns to Gobo Arena, and this will be a card you won't want to miss. This month features USBA Bantamweight champion Hurley Sneed, undefeated middleweight Philip Moore Field, and Detroit's first ever women's boxing match. There'll also be a Judix Mink Coat giveaway. To top that off, the Pass Stadium Club offers a package that includes a pre-fight party with free pizza and beer, press notes, and a Kronk souvenir, and the chance to meet the fighters, all for the price of a regular $12 ticket. To order your tickets, call Pass at 583-7600. Here's the putter, Monty Robbins, for the University of Michigan. It'll be Roselle Richardson fielding the putt for the University of Minnesota. A good snap and a high spiraling kick standing on end. Caught at the 38, and he is down at the 42-yard line. Andre McIntyre, who is having a whale of a football game so far, in to make the tackle. 
Uh, Richardson, after feeling the punt, leaves the playing surface, and the flag is down. We'll have to wait to see what the infraction is here. I believe it's on Strife, number 13 of Minnesota, pushing illegal use of hands in the back of one of the Michigan ball players. So we're going to walk off 10 yards right now. They did have good field position right away. Another penalty. Now this is Minnesota to have problems. The third one against the Gophers, and we are not halfway through this first quarter. Now the Michigan defensive unit, which has come on with each passing week, returns to the field. There it is right there. You see number 13 hitting number 27 in the back. Thomas Wiltshire. It's a first down for Minnesota at the 36 yard line. Boggy again changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Gives it to Thompson. Breaks straight to the 45 and jumps forward to the 47 yard line. Doug Mallory making the tackle. Thompson averaging six yards per carry. It's interesting to note that all of the starting backs are averaging nearly six yards per carry for Minnesota this year. Well, this team can run the football. It's very effective when they do this. And what you see this time right now is we're going to take a look at this possible measurement. We got a guard trapping right now, and here's Thompson. He's going to use the guard coming around, use him very effectively. He's good back, keeps his shoulders right square to the field, goes north and south. That's how you gain yards. And the big thing about that formation that time, folks, was they were running out of a two tight end offense. Right now, in the second series, we have not seen the same alignment yet. And there's Gary Muller making adjustments. It's going to be close, but short of a first down, so. Minnesota can run just about anything it so desires here with second and less than a yard for the first down at the 46. How about the old play action go up on top? Do you like that play here? I like it. Okay. We'll have to see whether the Gophers like <laughs> <Sorry>. it. <laughs> There's a big difference. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> Jason Bruce goes wide to the left. Mel Anderson flanked to the right. Second and less than a yard for the first down. It's Thompson. He hurdles into the line on the left side, gets out to the 46 and a half. Mark Mester made the tackle and picks up the first down. So apparently we like your play better than the Gophers. No, he says, let's make sure we get the first down, and that is the safe call. Thompson had 117 yards rushing against Wisconsin last week. It was the fifth time this season that he has been at 100 or over. That's incredible for a freshman. He has really had a season. 6'2", 204. They're showing the wishbone now with a pair of tight ends on first down. Bakke slides down the side, gets it to Wilson. He's out to the midfield stripe and crashes into, well, nope, he's a little bit short. About the 48 yard lines where they're going to spot the ball. You know, that's funny on that. Where you were correct that he was uh, over the 50. And it's the only time they do that. It seems like when the knee hits in the middle of the field, Larry, they call where the knee hits. But if it's down in the goal line, they, they don't call it that way. <laughs> seems that way. Four carries for 35 yards now for Kevin Wilson. Second down and nine yards to go. We're midway through the opening quarter. A scoreless game at Michigan Stadium. Big collision. Foggy keeps the ball. And he is spun out of the play at the 49 yard line. Andy Moeller got him by the jersey and spun him around. Looked like he was going to set him out of bounds. But the official says he stayed in the field of play. So the clock continues to run. It'll be third down and five yards to go. Foggy looking to the far side for some help. From head coach John Gutekunst. He's in his first season. Gophers having uh, pretty good success in the rushing department so far. It has been the penalty that has played them. Foggy back the throw. Under pressure on loads, and it's incomplete. Craig Otto got a hand on it at the 37-yard line, but it was drilled, and he could not hold it. So they'll bring up a fourth down and five, and Minnesota will be forced to give up the football. Tony Gant is... Backing up, he will receive the punt from the foot of Rhett Herbel. Herbel standing at his 38-yard line. At a 45-yarder in his first kick, low snap this time, he got it away. A high spiraling kick taken at the 16, 
Reverse and down he goes at the 20 yard line. A return of about four yards for Tony Gant as Carlos McGee came up and made the tackle. Yeah, going back to that last series for Minnesota that time, it really they're going to have to start making some adjustments offensively because Michigan only rushed three ball players, and if five people can't protect the quarterback when they're only rushing three ball players, you're going to have a long Saturday afternoon. Foggy has been under a lot of pressure every time he has gone yes. back this afternoon. Yes, he has, and once again, as I mentioned earlier, that when that is the case, he's not effective. He gets those happy feet. He starts looking around. He gets nervous. He doesn't look downfield at his receivers. He's worrying about a way to get out of trouble, and he looks to run more often than he does to pass. He's hit just 45% this season through the air. You can contrast that with Jim Harbaugh's 66.5%. You know, it is a shame, as you mentioned here in the open, Larry, that this young man, as we take a look at him, probably uh, the best quarterback that's ever played this position for the maize and blue, I feel, anyhow. Uh, he does win the Heisman Trophy if isn't for this man down in Miami. That's, uh, that's a fact. Minnesota, in time of possession, has dominated this game. It's a scoreless contest, but Minnesota has had the ball six minutes more already. Then has the Wolverines. We have 6.25 left in the opening quarter. Morris cuts back inside, gets out to the 24-yard line. Don Pollard making a tackle on Jamie Morris, who's having himself quite a season. He is now 10th in the all-time rushing circles for the University of Michigan. Look at the size of Dames, Uzar, Haberstein. That is a big offensive line. They are big. 306, 285, 289, 289. Dames is a little guy at 258. As good a coach in his first season as the right. head coach. Tough name. you got to work on that. <laughs> and the whistles. Flags are down. And we have another penalty. Good coach was on the staff. A blue Holtz coming with Holtz to Minnesota as the defensive coordinator. The illegal procedure is the call against Michigan. Moves the ball back to the 19. The Wolverines are having trouble getting their offense on track. Well, in the first series, they, they had a nice play. They started off the game with a simple dive, got about four yards, and then Bo would try to go downtown to to Jokic, which was unsuccessful. But uh, right now, I think he's going to go back to the bread and butter that he knows he likes to run the football. And right now, he's in the wishbone, so he probably will run the football. And he's got McMurtry flanked wide to the left with Higgins flanked to the right. <laughs> My boy is going to throw on first down. He's got Higgins out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Steve Franklin made the tackle. Higgins picking up 29 yards on the play. And once again, they're in the wishbone. They'll probably run. <laughs> As we mentioned, though, on their big plays, they like to go to Higgins. Here they are in the wishbone. Play action right now. A little fake. Not much of a fake goes back. And Higgins is all by himself. Runs a flag. Good route. Has a defensive back turned around. And if it's not for that arm tackle right there, he goes the distance. The 29th catch of the season for Ken Higgins, a senior from Battle Creek Lakeview. First down for Michigan in Minnesota territory for the first time. Harbaugh, the keeper, dives across the 40 to the 38-yard line. Jim Harbaugh carries to the Minnesota 38-yard line. It'll be second down and about two yards to go. Jim has rushed twice now for a total of 12 yards. As you can see right now that it is getting colder as we go along in this game. He has his hands in the pouch. It's very important that he does keep his hands warm so that the snap is secured properly. Higgins back into the ball game, replacing Paul Jokic. That's a pretty good tandem. It's split in. He is split to the right now. Harbaugh turns, gives it to White, and he is drilled at the 36-yard line. Anthony Burke making the tackle for the Golden Gophers. Burke did put a hit on that time. The old cross buck. 
Minnesota has shown the ability to move the football this year. They're averaging 354 yards in total offense and 22 points of all game. They've been blown out by a couple of teams. Oklahoma 63 to nothing and Michigan State 52 to 23. Mandel and Walker are in there right now. It's a double tight end offense right now. Short yardage formation. Third down, less than a yard to go with a wishbone. And it's Perryman. He's got the first down easily as he crashes down to the 32 and a half yard line. Now Perryman's first carry of the afternoon. Perryman with six touchdowns this season. He's averaging over four yards per yeah. carry. Uh, Higgins back into the ball game for Michigan, replacing Derek Rucker. It's another first down for the Wolverines, who are starting to show a very impressive offensive attack. The second possession. Morris cuts back beautifully. Flag is down in the pile at the 27-yard line. Bruce Holmes making the tackle. You know, it's probably going to be a holding call. Probably, you know, something I don't like this call either. You know, maybe being former offensive lineman, Larry. Here's the play, and we're going to take a look at it. We got Hammerstein, I believe, coming. Excuse me, Dame's coming around. He's pulling. Morris is right behind him. And look, look at the official right there. This play is six yards down the field, and he's throwing the flag down there. I don't like that. Call the flag at the line of scrimmage if there's holding, because somebody's getting an advantage, and that's why the holding occurs. But down the field, when the guy's getting blown off the line of scrimmage, they should let it go. <laughs> How is that, Doctor? <laughs> I tell you what, you're specific. You don't speak in general terms. You make a good point. Jokish and McMurtry are both into the wall game now for Michigan. Along with Ken Higgins, who is split to the right, on first down and 19. High ball back to throw, looks left. Throws right, and it's a little bit behind the intended receiver on the far side, Jimmy Moore. It'll be second down in 19. Pretty good pass coverage for the University of Minnesota, and the Wolverines' options were dwindling with each passing second, and Harbaugh's throw to Jamie Morris was a little behind him, a little low. And he was talking to Jokic that time, maybe a, a route that was supposed to be running was not. But it's the first time that I saw him lose his composure a little bit in the pocket. He didn't step up, threw off balance, threw off his wrong foot that time, which really caused the incomplete pass. Jeff Brown into the game to replace Paul Jokic for the University of Michigan. Three minutes and a second left in the opening quarter of the scoreless game. Fireball rolling to his left. He's got a lot of running room. He's directing traffic to get a block. Oh, did he get one? He ran out of bounds at the 32-yard line, but I believe it was Gerald White that hit his man who was airborne, and he just went flying through the air. A gain of about nine yards for Harbaugh and the Wolverines, and they're looking at third and ten. Right now, as you can see, he's getting a little pressure from Holmes that time. If he did not get pressure from Holmes, he had Higgins wide open down the left sideline. Right now, he is directing traffic, and he's a smart man. He said, let me get out of bounds before I get hit. It was Carlos McGee that went flying through the air like the proverbial swan. Third down and ten. Jokic is back to the right. High ball over the middle and it's incomplete. Intended for Gerald White a little high. He got his fingertips on it, but could not hold it. Doug Pollard was there, but it falls incomplete. It'll bring up fourth down and ten, and the big penalty against Michigan has thwarted the drive. Take a look at your bottom of your screen right now. Number 72, Ellie, he's putting on a clinic how to pass block. And right now, here's the pass right off the fingertips. Would have been a first down if he was completed. A 50-yard field goal attempt by Mike Gillette. Monty Robbins will spot the ball at the 40-yard line. The snap, the spot, the kick is long enough, but it's pulled off to the left. So it is not good. And Minnesota, with the help of the penalty against the Wolverines, stops the Michigan drive, and it remains a scoreless game. Two minutes, 45 seconds left in the opening quarter. Really amazing that we haven't seen any scoring going on in this game. 
But once again, we go back to that penalties. The penalties have stopped both teams now on drives that we thought that there was going to be some scoring. So Minnesota takes over. 2.45 left in the opening quarter. We'll be back in a moment on Pro-Am Sports. Commitment. Experience. It all comes together when you work with the best. Master Mechanic Tools. Only from True Value Hardware Stores. At the Indianapolis Speedway. Or in your own garage. They're backed by True Value Hardware Stores Commitment experience and exclusive customer satisfaction policy master mechanic tools exclusively from true value hardware stores and home center the excitement of the nba comes your way in november on pass catch isaiah bill and the rest of the gang as chuck daly develops his strategic attack against some of the best opposition in the league so make plans now to join us throughout november for all the slams all the jams of the nba as the pistons strut their stuff in the explosive central division the pistons take their act on the road to battle the physical bullets live from landover catch all the action wednesday night on michigan sports source Larry Osterman, Skip Mackholtz at Michigan Stadium. First down for the Wolverines. Foggy rolling out to the left, trying to pick up some yardage, and he is blasted at the 35-yard line by Ivan Hicks. Foggy picking up a couple. It'll be second down and eight for the Golden Gophers. And Ivan Hicks will hit you, as you did just see. Foggy that time, uh, Hicks played the play so perfectly. Foggy tried to get Hicks into a cat and mouse game right now, trying to make him commit. Hicks did not commit. He just waited for his pursuit to come in from the inside and help him out, which they did. And just a short gain that time of about two and a half yards. Mel Anderson comes wide to the right. They have Jason Bruce set as a split left end. Quick count, Foggy back to throw. Over the middle, he fires it into Anderson, who is hit as he catches the ball. Is dropped at the 43 and a half yard line. It will be very close to a first down for Minnesota. It'll be spotted at the 43, and it is a first down for the Gophers. Anderson is Foggy's favorite receiver that time. He knew where the st sticks was. He knew he, he knew he had to get to about the 44 yard line for a first down. Went down, did a button hook, and got the first down. Anderson from. Holmesford, Pennsylvania, with the uh, leading receiving total of 16 catches for Minnesota this year. First down for the Gophers. Again, it's the wishbone. Foggy to Thompson, and he's shut down after carrying to the 46 and a half. Andy Moeller making the tackle on the young freshman. He was a very fine high school athlete, a high school All-American, averaging 9.7 yards per carry as a freshman, as a senior in high school. He's three for 14 yards this afternoon. Very rarely, though, do you see a back have a great day offensively on the ground against a Michigan football team. They just do not permit it. Second down and seven. Third receiver is wide to the right. Foggy dumps it over the middle and it's deflected and knocked down. It looked like it was Andre McIntyre that got through there and knocked the pass away. And it'll bring up third down and seven. Ball at the 47-yard line. Foggy three for seven in the air, 30 yards. Well, that play was a, a play to Bruce, number 38. He's coming out of the backfield that time, and it was a little delay. What happened was that the linebacker grabbed him, held it up, put more pressure as they did have a blitz on Foggy that time. Gary Couch is in. He is set as a flanker to the right side. Now Foggy, after taking a look, calls timeout on third down. So with 53 seconds left in the opening quarter, Michigan and Minnesota scoreless. The Gophers call time. They'll have third down and seven at their own 47-yard line when play resumes. The entire defensive unit comes to the near sideline for the Wolverines. Well, that time, once again, they were going to come after Foggy. Dita Heron went, went out to the back, to the excuse me, to the receiver that time. Looked like he was going to double cover. And in the last couple of seconds, he came off the corner, was coming on a blitz. Foggy did notice it. And he said, let's have a timeout here. Let's readjust this play.
Ricky Foggy getting instructions on the far side. The Gophers started out with a victory over Bowling Green this season, then lost two in a row, but came back with three consecutive wins to open Big Ten play against Purdue, Northwestern, and Indiana before being blanked by Ohio State and then blasted by Michigan State, rebounding with a 27-20 victory over the Badgers a week ago. Coach John Gunnekunst talking with his young quarterback, Ricky Foggy, Foggy, who has seen a good deal of experience in his two-plus years on the Minnesota campus. He certainly was a fine for the Minnesota program. Big third and seven facing the Gophers. Foggy back the throw here. They come, throws over the middle, and it's incomplete. It was intended at the 45-yard line for Mel Anderson, but Andy Moeller came over and may have gotten a piece of it. At least he was defending against the pass. Ball's incomplete. And again, the Gophers will give up possession of the ball. Well, if you're Minnesota, you're going to have to stop throwing some screens or draws or something to, to stop this rush from coming at you a little bit, slow it down. And they have not done that so far. The punt from Herbal, he's been kicking very well all afternoon. This one a little shorter. Fair catch for Tony Gant. And Michigan will have the ball at its own 17 and a half yard line. They've been putting pretty good pressure on the punter. And before the afternoon is over, Michigan will block one punt. Write it down. Absolutely. The last time Michigan had the ball, it was the second possession of the day. They moved down the field very well, but a penalty, a holding call, cost them dearly, and they had to settle for a 50-yard field goal attempt, which was wide to the left. They have the ball for the third time this afternoon. Hard ball to Morris. Cuts outside. Gets a block, and he is hauled down at the 30-yard line when it looked as though he might sprint for big yardage. Steve Franklin made the tackle on Morris. They will spot the ball at the 29. Oh, now they're moving up to the 31. You're going to take a look at user right there, 74, just doing an outstanding job of blocking right now. And let's take a look at the little big man. He can carry the mail. Jamie Morris at 5'7", 179. A junior from Era, Massachusetts. First down for Michigan. Arbaugh to Morris. Struggling, dives out to the 34-yard line. Anthony Burke made the tackle. Burke and Holmes, who play on the right side of the defensive forward wall for Minnesota, each had 12 solo tackles against Wisconsin last week. And from our, our microphones down on the field, you can see they are hitting down there. A lot of crashes. That is the end of the first period. We'll go to the second quarter at Michigan Stadium. It's the Wolverines nothing, the Gophers nothing. We'll be back in a moment on Pro-Am Sports. Larry Osterman and Skip Mackholz at Michigan Stadium. It's scoreless. The Wolverines in possession. Second down. Eight yards to go. The ball at the 34-yard line in Michigan territory as we prepare to begin period number two. Harbaugh pitches back to Morris. He's going for the outside at the 40. Cuts back at the 45-50. And down he goes at the Minnesota 47-yard line. Dave Williams made the tackle on Morris, who in his last two carries has looked as though he might break one for the distance. Right now, you can see the guards, Hammerstein and Dames, coming around the corner. When you have offensive linemen down 10 yards down the field getting blocked, you know you're going to have a successful play. And there it is right there, folks. Great blocking on the corner. Jamie Morris on the verge of another brilliant day. McMurtry is in motion to the left. White up the middle. Crashes down to the Minnesota 40-yard line. Anthony Burke made the tackle at the 40. That'll be short of a first down by about three yards. Second and three. Now, this is why Michigan's been so successful over the last 20 years, anyhow, really, that they get so concerned defenses with their tailbacks.
that they forget about the fullback and that quick hitter. And that's what happens constantly right now. You'll see that many, many times after a successful run, they come back with the fullback. Ken Higgins is split to the left. A wish goal shown for Michigan. White is hit at the line of scrimmage and spilled to a no game. It'll be third down and three yards to go for the Wolverines. Gerald White picking himself up after being stopped by Leverens. White, the senior from Titusville, Florida. Well, this is uh, kind of a strange situation. But maybe that Bo feels he's in fourth down territory. He's taken, put Walker in. Another tight end is taken out, Higgins. They've thrown from this formation earlier this afternoon. Harbaugh has some running room, gets the first down to the 35. Jim Harbaugh sliding down the left side, hit by Leverage, but not before he picked up the first down for the Wolverines. Jim is now four for 26 on the ground. And now McMurtry and Jokic check back in for the University of Michigan. Why that play is successful is that they got a secure block on the defensive end and they got out of containment. And right now they got to the corner and put a lot of pressure on Martinez. The Michigan go for a cornerback that time. Didn't know who to take, the pitch man or Harbaugh. McMurtry is flanked wide to the right. Jokic is split to the left. Harbaugh to throw. He's looking for McMurtry. He's got it at the 25 and steps out of bounds immediately. Dutrell made the tackle for Minnesota. Harbaugh has now gone over the 2,000-yard mark, a new single-season record for the University of Michigan in the passing department. And as we take a look at Jim right now, dropping back, not much of a fake right there, but this is a major league arm right now. The ball's on a rope. It's a little out to Gregory. Keeps his feet in bounds. You only have to have one in college. It's a nice pickup, nine yards. There's the statistic, the new record for the Wolverines. A pair of tight ends. Harbaugh back to throw. Now being chased, he's got a man open, tosses it. DeMorris at the 30, 25, spilled at the 21. Flags are down. Well, it looks like it's going to be a clip. And it's unfortunate. I think it's on Perryman, number 37, trying to come back to break him loose that time and uh, did hit the Michigan gopher in the back Michigan Minnesota gopher in the back going to be a clipping call as we take a look at it, this is a broken play right now he's trying to go to the tight end down the middle but it's well covered so right now is to Morris now Morris is looking you're gonna come into your screen right there here's Perryman I you know something that looked like to me the Minnesota gopher was already on the ground but I'm not making the call. <laughs> uh, probably just as well. <laughs> the penalties have really played an important role in this game this afternoon. That doesn't look like a whole lot, but it's been the timing of those penalties. It'll be second down and 16 yards to go as the ball is moved back to the 41. McMurtry flanked to the right. Yoki split to the right. Harbaugh back to throw. Has a lot of running room. At the 35 and hit and drop back at the 32. Lost the ball. Minnesota recovers at the 35. Dutrell gathered it in at the 35-yard line. And Michigan turns over the ball to the Golden Gophers. And we still have a scoreless game with 12 minutes left in the first half. Now, as we take a look at this, he's trying to go downfield to Jokic. He is covered, does a nice job. And I believe this is number 70. I don't have a name on this young man right here who knocks the ball loose. And Minnesota recovers. So the Gophers have the ball at the 35-yard line. They have Bruce in motion. Now he's set as a wing to the left. Boggy fakes the handoff. Back to throw. Way over throw. Intended for Craig Otto at the 45-yard line. Tony Gap was back, but was thrown rather poorly. 
But once again, there was the tight end down the sideline, a play they opened the game up with. He was wide open. It has to be a touch pass. You have to get the ball over the linebacker's head and in front of the cornerbacks. And that's what Foggy has problems with. Foggy is statistics for the afternoon. On right, second down at 10. Thompson with his back to the line of scrimmage chugs forward to the 39 yard line. Andre McIntyre enjoying a brilliant defensive afternoon for Michigan making the tackle on the young freshman from Rochester Minnesota. It'll be third down and about six yards to go. Thompson has carried the ball four times for 17 yards this afternoon. Minnesota comes to the line of scrimmage with a third and six. A pair of tight ends. Boggy gives to his fullback, Ron Getz, who gets to the 43-yard line. Andy Moeller and Andre McIntyre collaborating to make the tackle as gets a short of a first down. It's spotted at the 43-yard line. They must go to the 44 for the first down. Oh, Whoa. there was hesitation there on the sideline whether they were going to punt the ball or not. Being about a yard short of the first down, they have decided to play it smart. Probably <laughs> It would be smart to punt it away. Grant Herbel is doing the putting for Minnesota, and Tony Gadd has gone back to the Michigan 16 low snap and a high floating kick. He's got great hang time here. Bounces off Gantz's chest. Big pile up. Minnesota recovers. Gantz has the ball bounce off his chest and the way. And the Gophers recover the football on the Michigan 13 yard line. What a big break for Minnesota. Number 23, Stewart. So the Gophers get a break. Time is out. 10:27 left in the half. Still no score. We'll be back with more in a moment on Pro Am Sports. This Michigan crowd is on its feet now, urging the Wolverine defensive unit to greater heights. Fumble. Loose ball. Minnesota has possession at the 15-yard line. And that ball was on the ground that time. It was going to be an option to the left right now. Foggy was a little careless handling the football. He put it into the fullback's stomach, tried to take it out, hit the fullback's hip, and the ball went on the ground. Minnesota still in possession, but now at the 15-yard line with a second down. Again, this crowd of 105,000 rises to its feet to we'll see if it can help the Michigan defensive unit. Foggy back to throw. Swing pass incomplete. In and out of the hands of Darrell Thompson. Falling incomplete in the backfield. And now it'll be third down. So the Gophers have not done a whole lot to help themselves after getting a king-sized break here midway through the second period. They're looking at a third and 12. Ball at the 15 yard line in Michigan territory. Gary Couch comes wide to the left. What Thompson has done for the season as a freshman. Anderson is split to the right. Foggy in the eye. Back to throw. Being rushed on Rhodes. Touchdown! Anderson on the receiving end, and Minnesota takes the lead with 9 minutes 32 seconds left to be played in the first half. So a stunner here at Michigan Stadium as Gant didn't handle the punt. The Gophers fell on it. And on third down and 12, Foggy hits Mel Anderson for the touchdown. And now it'll be Low Miller attempting to make it seven to nothing.
the snap the spot and the kick and Minnesota has taken a seven to nothing lead over the University of Michigan with 932 left in the opening half. Now the penalty and now the turnover playing important roles in this game. You know as we take a look at this touchdown right now it's coming on your screen Fock is getting some pressure right there eludes it has enough time. What happened here is the receiver ran a post pattern. He had Ivan Hicks turned him around went to the flag completion touchdown and right there you can see the official making sure that he did have control of the football before he did call it a touchdown. Foggy once again throwing off his back foot something he's done all day. Look at the official sees the one foot in bounds make sure he's going to hold on to the football then he calls a touchdown. So Minnesota has taken a seven to nothing lead here midway through the second quarter as the Wolverines get their kick receive unit on the field. And this crowd of 105,000 with the exception of the band is suddenly stunned to silence. Jamie Morris and Eric Campbell are back as the deep end for Michigan as Chip Lowmiller gets ready to kick it away. Well, this first half, Larry, has been a half of mistakes. We did see a muff fumble that time, a muff punt, rather, excuse me. Now penalties from both teams right now. Very sloppy first half. A line drive kick carries to the end zone. Morris is going to run it out. The 15 to 20, and he is filled at the 22 yard line. The Michigan will begin operations at its own 22 yard line with a first down but trailing seven to nothing. The second quarter throughout the season has been an extremely productive one offensively for the Wolverines. Morris doesn't know what to do there at that point to stay in or to come out decides to come out looking for a lane to get into finds a little bit of one and returns it to the 24 yard line 23 yard line. Harbaugh to throw on first down. Swing pass. Complete to Morris down the sideline at the 40, and he skids on up to the 45. Nice run by Jamie Morris, who was airborne for the last four after being hit by Donovan Small down around the ankles. Big gain out to the 44. First down for Michigan. 59 yards on three carries. Scoring drive for the Gophers. Three plays. They went in with Anderson scoring on the pass play. Harbaugh gives to White. He shoves forward to the 50. And then back. But they'll mark his forward progress to the midfield strike. Clock running. 8.45 left in the opening half. Jokic is in replacing Ken Higgins for Michigan. We have a very quiet crowd on our hands right now. But the Wolverines are bouncing back offensively with two big plays in this particular drive. Jeff Brown goes over and sets as the tight left end. As Harbaugh takes a look, pitches back now to Morris. Morris cuts back inside, then outside he goes. And he is hauled out at the 47. Gain of a couple of yards. Michigan has been has been able to move the football this afternoon but it has not been a consistent offense. No it hasn't and it, they've, they've stopped themselves. This offensive line is doing a great job. Vitaly he, uh, this offensive line is just a, a good one folks right now. Anytime you can get to the corner untouched as he's done. Nice some nice running right that that time by Morris almost has enough for a first down. But with the offensive line coming off the football as they are. They're going to be successful. They're down less than a yard to go for the first down. Carmen packs into the middle and just did pick it up. He's just short of the 45 yard line and that's about the point that the Wolverines must have moved the football forward to get the first down. And it will be a first and 10 for the Wolverines. 736 left in the opening half. Minnesota leading at 7 nothing. As we mentioned earlier sometimes you do have a tendency to look ahead and right now it looks like Michigan has really has done that they've been making problem uh, mistakes that they usually don't do and right now I think the best thing that happened to this football team is that Minnesota scored first it might fire them up a bit 
McMurtry is flanked to the right. Higgins spit to the left. Wishbone shell. Harbaugh back to throw. Myers got some pressure and falls as he tried to reverse his field back at the 38 or 9 yard line. So it's a big loss for the University of Michigan. They'll spot the ball between the 39 and 40 yard lines. Loss of 16. Second down. Harbaugh looking to their side. And very long, <laughs> yes. Well, as you take a look at him right there, I don't know if the field is getting to the point where it's freezing or what have you. The footing has not been bad from what we've been watching anyhow. He tried to pull a little move on that time, and his feet came out from under him. On second down, Harbaugh back to throw to the side, caught by Morris, spins forward to the 50, and down he goes at the 47-yard line. So they picked up a big chunk of about 14 yards. Bruce Holmes making the tackle on Jamie Morris. It'll be third down and about 11, make it 12 yards. Well, this time you can't see the defensive alignment. What they're doing right now is playing man on the outside, and then they have a zone underneath, half man, half zone. And what they do offensively is they get the ball to the back coming out of the backfield in the flat and say, get me some yards, use your abilities. You quite often see that in the pros. If the back cannot do anything once he gets the ball, they get a new back. Yucky is put to the left, but Mercury is spiked to the left. Higgins up on the line of scrimmage. Harbaugh back to throw. Over the middle. Cut by Morris at the 40. Comes outside 35. Down the sidelines and driven out of bounds at the 23-yard line by Matt Martinez. It's a first down for the Wolverines. A play covering 25 yards. And a moment ago, the Wolverines in a deep hole have pulled themselves out of it. I just got done explaining it the previous play. Morris comes, swings out of the backfield. Right here, nothing fancy. Linebackers are dropping off. Get me some yards, Jamie. And he does just that. Morris has caught three for 59 yards this afternoon. We've got a bit of scope right now. Minnesota has a little game, a little stun on up front with their front four. Look at the wide open field Morris has. Just uses his athletic ability once again. Should put the ball in the other hand. Not much there this trip as White is spun around by Lennon. Stopped at the 22 yard line. It'll be second down and about eight yards to go. White has carried six times, totaling 20 yards for Michigan rushing this afternoon. Morris returns to the ball game, a tailback slot. Perriman is in at fullback, and now they sit up at the wish ball with Gerald White, the other running back. Higgins is split to the right. With Murphy flanked wide to the left. Harbaugh changes the play, fakes the handoff. Late pitch coming to Morris. Ooh. He is really belted at the 25 yard line and shoved out of bounds. A loss back to the original line of scrimmage as Leverins made the tackle on Jamie Morris. Leverins does an excellent job coming from his linebacker position. Once again, though, I don't know why they run this to the short side of the field. The sideline is a defender. Watch the pop. Boom. They say he stepped out of bounds at the 24-yard line. It'll be a loss of a yard. Third and 11. Pair of receivers wide to the left. McCurtry and Jokic. Higgins split to the right, the short side. You might see him go to the freshman right here because he's got single coverage. Harbaugh in trouble on low. Caught by White at the 20, and he is smashed at the 19-yard line. Well, the Gophers are just turning everybody loose. They are hitting out there, and you can hear without microphones on the field. <laughs> they are popping, and it is crisp down there. Harbaugh's coming out right now. He's looking for anybody right now. He's having trouble right now. He's getting heat from both ends, and he finds White down the middle. White doesn't know what's in store for himself just as well a 35 yard field goal attempt but time has been called by Minnesota's Golden Gophers 4 11 left in the opening half Minnesota leads at seven to nothing and when player resumes this man Mike Gillette will attempt the field goal in the meantime he'll come to the near sideline I don't think it's a case of uh, Minnesota trying to freeze uh, Gillette up a little bit it's just a case that they didn't have many 
the proper number of men on the field at the time so they took a timeout. Gelato's had uh, a good season after coming back into the good graces of the Michigan program six for nine in the field goal department he's a sophomore from St. Joseph Michigan kick one fifty three yards against Iowa so this comparatively is not much more than a chip shot the breeze is blowing into his face however so that uh, might be a factor his old glory going straight downfield from south to north and that is what Gillette will be facing. I guess they got a block on right now that they're talking about. Gillette missed a 50 yard attempt earlier with the wind at his back. Monty Robbins will spot the ball. It'll be a 35 yard attempt. Here's the kick. It's long enough, and it is good. So Mike Gillette puts Michigan on the scoreboard. They have to settle for three. With four minutes, eight seconds left in the opening half, it's Minnesota seven and the Wolverines three. Well, it's been kind of a frustrating afternoon so far for the University of Michigan. We'll see what happens as this game progresses, and we'll have more for you in just a moment on Pro Am Sports. Well, the Red Wings and the Caps coming your way at 7.30 on Pro-Am Sports. It'll be live from the Joe Louis Arena on Friday evening following racing. We hope you'll join us on Pro-Am Sports. 7-3 Minnesota leading Michigan. Pat Moons will be kicking off for the Wolverines. Ball being teed at the 35-yard line. And the deep men for the Gophers are Carlos McGee and Donovan Small. Seven to three, Minnesota taking advantage of a muffed punk reception by Tony Gant to take the seven nothing lead. Wolverines came back with a drive that resulted in three. This is a terrible kickoff. And it's taken by Michigan. He was in bounds. Eric Campbell picked up the big hop at the 30 yard line and the Wolverines get it right back. Holy smoke. Tell me that was a design play. Well, I, I don't think it was. In fact, I know it was not. I, what I can't understand is I, I guess Minnesota believed that the ball was going to bounce out of bounds and they didn't, they didn't go after it. What happened was the wind held up the ball. It's as simple as that. They were kicking into the wind. It was a high kick. It happened at Purdue. It's the third time. Well, let's take a look at it. Maybe it is a design chip shot right here to the right side. We got four or five Wolverines down, and they recover the football. It's a first down. Here's Morris, and he is wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage by Steve Thompson. There is some serious hitting going on on that field, folks. The third time this season that Michigan has recovered its own kickoff. Well, maybe it is a design play then. Morris seven carries for 41 yards this afternoon. Nearly half the Wolverine yardage gained rushing today. Second down at eight. Hard ball back to throw. Looks to the far side. McMurtry, great catch. Holy cow, what a catch by the young freshman. Matt Martinez was there. McMurtry stretched his full to gather it in. First down for Michigan. One of the few freshmen playing for the general right now. This is a great throw, but a better catch. What concentration, keeping both feet in bounds, and watch him laid out here right there, holding on to that football. Harbaugh has hit his last six straight passes. Pitches back to Norris. Coming to the long side, got running room, he's at the 10. Down he goes at the seven yard line. Steve Franklin making the tackle. With two minutes 57 seconds left in the opening half, the Wolverines are now in a position to take the lead to the dressing room. We have a Minnesota ball player injured right now. Looks like number 88. It is Bruce Holmes who is lifting on that right leg. 
Morris is waiting. This is a smart back here, folks. He's what? Waiting for his offensive line. Look at the hole right now. He didn't rush it. He waited for the offensive line to get their blocks, wait for them to set up, and then he picked the proper hole. Thomas Wilcher has got into the ball game, replacing Jamie Morris for the Wolverines. We we'll have a second down and less than a yard to go for the first down at the eight. And this is where they become very difficult to defense and sh short and, and one. Pair of tight ends. The wishbone. Our ball gives to Wilcher. He's at the five, still on his feet. Touchdown, Michigan. Steve Thompson grabbed him, but Wilcher would not be denied. Powered his way in, and Michigan takes a 9-7 lead. You know, we did see this a couple of weeks ago, Larry. It's like waking up a sleeping giant. Don't get him mad at you. And that's what happens when you do this to Michigan. You score on him, it aggravates him, and they come back. Two mistakes now by Minnesota, and all of a sudden they're down now. And Mike Gillette, there's a flag down. Apparently, there has been uh, some extracurricular discussions going on down on the field. Didn't see anything uh, physical, but perhaps verbal. Two and a half minutes left to be played. The legal procedure call is being uh, the only thing I, against Michigan. Yeah, the only thing I can think of is what they do, folks, is they set up their alignment to the left. And across the line. Oh, there's the, yeah, there's yeah. the call. <laughs> John Elliott went across the neutral zone. We got to slap John's head for that. Yeah. <laughs> Michigan attempting to put 10 points on the board in a matter of a minute and 38 seconds. The snap, the spot, the kick is good. And Michigan now leads by a score of 10 to 7 with two and a half minutes left in the opening half. A very short kickoff by Pat Moons, a reverse high hop gathered in by Eric Campbell as Michigan recovered its own kickoff, and the Wolverines go in for six. Let's take a look at the touchdown out of the wishbone formation right now. Wilcher's going to get the football, runs right through number 96. He says, I know where the goal line is. Let me get six for the maize and blue. You know, they have so many backs to come at you. White, Morris, Wiltshire, and look at look at the great running. He's a, the back never use stops his leg motion. And that's another good back they have there. Carlos McGee and Donovan Small will be the deep men for Minnesota as Pat Moons prepares to kick off. Moons, a senior from Fort Lauderdale. It was Moons that kicked the uh, Short kickoff the previous occasion landed on the 30 yard line went high with a reverse bounce right into Eric Campbell's hand. Eric is again set up as the second man in from the near sideline Wiltshire along the sideline. We'll see if he tries it again. This time it's a little longer. Sure does. But it's caught this time by Small. He is in deep trouble. And down he goes at the 27-yard line. The man is really a clever play. If you have a kicker that has the ability to, you know, it's almost like a pop shot, uh, and you have some speed on your kickoff team, it's possible that it will work. Four-play drive covering the 30 yards, a minute 38 seconds. Walter going the final eight, and Gillette kicking the extra point. Michigan leads it 10 to 7 with 223 left for the opening hand. Critical series for Minnesota. They certainly do not want to turn the ball over here. Foggy has a split left in. High formation. Hand off to Thompson. He gets to the 30 and then shoved back to the 26. Darrell Thompson has not had a brilliant first half for Minnesota. He's been pretty well shut down by the Wolverines. This time it was Dieter Heron that did the damage. And this is an outside linebacker with a lot of ability. Perfect tackle, stands him up, stops the leg motion, puts him down on the ground. In the second quarter, Michigan has run 20 plays. Minnesota just seven. 
So it's a reverse of the time of possession that we saw in the opening quarter when Minnesota had the ball. Foggy throws to the far side, but he was in bounds. It's a completed forward pass and a first down as Mel Anderson made the reception. So that stops the clock, giving Minnesota a first down with a minute 40 left in the first half at the Gophers 39. Very smart play by Anderson that time, getting out of bounds, getting the first down, and giving Minnesota an opportunity maybe to pick up three points before this half is over. They start at the clock again. I don't understand that. Well, the initial indication was that he had gone out of bounds. Apparently, the clock was uh, just stopped and there's the Canada. Nothing there for Kevin Wilson, who was hammered by Andre McIntyre right at the 40 yard line, a gain of a yard. McIntyre is enjoying a very fine game this afternoon. Right here you can see Michigan. Penetration from all angles that time. Wilson with 37 yards and five carries. Foggy rolling to the right, stops. Now he's going around. He's got some daylight. Out to the 50, gets the first down of the Michigan 48-yard line. McIntyre and Dieter Heron collaborating to make the tackle on the Minnesota quarterback. Foggy looks like he sh shook up here a little bit. He's got to start getting back to the huddle, getting his offense on the ball right now. The clock is starting. Less than going to be about 40 seconds now. Anderson comes wide to the left. They have Jason Bruce set as a slot left. Boggy to the right, throws downfield, and it is incomplete. Intended for Anderson at the 38-yard uh, line. It was knocked down at the line of scrimmage, and, and you'll see this a lot from Foggy. The nose of the football was pointing down, and once you do see something like that occurring, uh, it's usually not a very good passer. Clock has stopped with 30 seconds left in the opening half. Michigan 10, Minnesota 7. Couch comes wide to the left. Now Couch is in motion to the short side. Foggy back to throw, looking long, and it is almost intercepted. Intended for Couch, Dieter Heron back covering, but it squirt between his fingers, fell incomplete, and with 25 seconds left in the half, it'll be third down and 10. That time, Minnesota's offensive line did an excellent job picking up the blitz that time. As we can see, they're doing an excellent job. Thompson's looking to hit somebody. And what happens here is Ricky picks out the wrong receiver. He throws in the coverage. There's the linebackers getting proper drops. But he had a man wide open in the middle of the field. Overeens with more than twice the yardage passing. Boggy throwing high and long intended for Mal Anderson falls incomplete. Wolverines are giving Foggy a little bit of pressure now, and he is releasing before he really wants to, and it brings up fourth and ten. Yes, he is throwing off the wrong foot, as we've mentioned a few times right now. Looks like they're going to punt the football away. Really not a bad half for Minnesota that time. They did get a couple of first downs, prevented Michigan from having an opportunity to try score again before the first half was over. This is Tony Gant who mishandled the last punt. Kerbal will be doing the punting for Minnesota. It's a good snap, and here's a high, long, floating kick. Kicks into the end zone. Man, he booted that one a mile. It landed on the goal line and kicked on out of play. It'll be brought out to the 20-yard line, so Michigan will have possession of the ball with 13 seconds left in the first half. A 48-yard punt for Brent Herbel. Bo is having a conversation with his quarterback right now. I, I would almost think that you just snap the football and fall on it. But maybe he's going to try to go after three more. Or six more. We shall see. Minnesota took the lead 7 to nothing. Minnesota came back uh, in a defensive role. Slow the Wolverines down. Michigan had to settle for the three-pointer. And then Michigan creating its own big break. 
went in for six and the extra point to gain the lead at halftime. The so time expires in the first half here at Michigan Stadium as the Wolverines escape the first half with a three point lead. Stay with us now at halftime. We'll be back with more in just a moment. It's Michigan 10, Minnesota 7. Let us not forget Bob Perriman, who has I had should, a very yes. fine season. Exactly. Excuse me. Look at the statistics. First downs fairly even. Total yards. Michigan holding the upper hand as a result of a strong second half or second quarter. Time of possession, edge to the Wolverines. The stats are close and the game is close. Sometimes that is not always the case, but right now, Michigan will receive the football. They'll defend the goal to the north. Campbell and Morris, the deep man. Morris handles it at the three. Comes up to 25 and dropped at the 30-yard line. Steve Franklin making the tackle on Jamie Morris, and the Wolverines will have good field position on a cool, cloudy afternoon in Ann Arbor. I was just going to mention that. You can see the fans, they're all wrapped up right now. Uh, it's going to be more important now that the backs, the quarterbacks, secure the football with two hands because it is very cold on that field. Higgins wide to the left. Brown set as a tight end to the right, and McMurtry is flanked to the right on first down for the Wolverines. Jamie Morris cut down after a gain of about two, possibly three yards, at the 33 by Larry Joyner. Joyner was switched from a safety spot to an outside linebacker by Minnesota, and that opened up the position for Don Pollard, who has played very well for the Gophers this afternoon. Morris has carried three times for 51 yards this afternoon. Second down, seven. Excuse me, Larry. Michigan will probably keep the ball on the ground right now. Looks like they're in passing formation, but I thought they were going to keep the ball on the ground and establish who's going to control the line of scrimmage. And they are going to keep it on the ground. White going to the short side. Get at the 35, spun around at the 36. Gerald White was hit head on at the 35 yard line. Picked up one additional yard. And it'll be third down and about four yards to go. Don Pollard making the tackle. You know, through all the games that we've done this year, Larry, I can't remember hearing the popping that's going on through the course of this game. There is some serious hitting going on. Don Pollard uh, banged up his left knee a little bit. You can see him limping off. Well, he hasn't made it to the middle of the field now, and he's going to have to have some help maybe to get off the field. Michigan is near the 50% mark, three of seven. Minnesota has converted two of seven third down situations. Pollard lifting on that left knee as he goes to the far sideline. Paul Jokic has checked into the ball game for Michigan, along with Greg McMurtry. McMurtry going wide to the left. That's the long side of the field as Michigan comes to the line of scrimmage with a wishbone. Split right end is Paul Jokic. Perriman bounces off of a tackler and spins forward to about the 40-yard line, but appears to be short of a first down by less than a yard. Larry Joyner made the tackle on Perriman. McGee says, I'll help the referee make this call. There's no call to be made. It is going to be short of the first down. They're going to punt the ball away. And Minnesota has really done what they wanted to do. Michigan received the ball on the second half kickoff. They wanted to stop them, get the ball back, and see what they can do right now with it. Monty Robbins punted just once in the opening half. Roselle Richardson is the deep man for Minnesota as uh, the Gophers put Tim men up on the line of scrimmage going for it. But he got it away, and it's a beauty. Fair catch called for, but it clears him and goes all the way down to the five and is down too late. They went into the end zone. What a break from Minnesota. That was a sensational punt. It was Todd Schulte who made a crack at downing the ball at about the two-yard line, but it skipped inside the end zone. 
This ball, they should have, he had his hand up to fair catch the ball. The ball really should have been caught. That is brought out to the 20 yard line. Sometimes like, it is a tendency when the man does have his hand up for a fair catch that the team coming down covering the punt will slow up a step. That's what happened that time. That step cost him 20 yards. First down at the 20 yard line. Foggy turns around, says something to his tailback, then gives to Darrell Thompson, who gets across the line of scrimmage for a couple. Dave Fulford Smith made the tackle. They spot the ball at the 22. We're in the early stages of the third quarter here at Michigan Stadium. Andy Moeller looking to the near side. Thompson has carried six times for 24 yards. It's a four yard per carry average. He has averaged six yards per carry through the season. Bobby straight back to throw. Shovels it ahead for a big gainer here for Wilson. He is out to the 38 yard line. Andrew McIntyre made the tackle. A nice looking play by the Minnesota Golden Gophers, and they pick up a first down. It really was a nice looking play. As you see what's going to happen here, they put Thompson out here like a swing pass right now, and here comes the shuffle pass. The linebackers are trying to cover the, the screen to the right, it leaves the middle of the field wide open. First down for the Gophers at their own 38 yard line for the wishbone. He has to his fullback to a straight ahead of the 40 to about 41 yard line. Billy Harris made the tackle. Ron Getz working as the backup to Kevin Wilson for fullback slot today. Getz has carried the ball three times for nine yards. Second and six. Four minutes deep into the third period. Again, the wishbone with a pair of tight ends for Minnesota. Foggy gives to Getz, and there's nothing there. He just, on his own, picks up about a yard near the 30, correction, the 43 yard line. Minnesota, so far, content to kind of grind it out against Minnesota, or Mich against Michigan here in this third quarter. Well, it looks right, right now that both, uh, it was a third and seven for Michigan, and they elected to run the football also. It looks like both teams are playing very close to the best right now, waiting for the other one to make a mistake. Mistakes have been big factors this afternoon. Penalties and turnovers. Third and four for Minnesota. Foggy changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Is hit behind the line and spun to the turf. Dave Fulkertsma with a brilliant defensive play, throwing Foggy for a big loss, and Minnesota will be forced to punt it away. Fulkertsma, a senior from Grand Rapids Calvin Christian High School. The big fella gets penetration right there. What the, their taught defensive tackles are. Go if a guard pulls a tackle, pulls, get in his hip pocket because they have nine times out of ten are going to lead you where the ball is, and that's what happened on that play. Michigan has ten men on the line of scrimmage, but it's not a full rush. The punt is away. Gant has it at his 23. Gets out to the 25-yard line. Very, very difficult when you're back there all by yourself. You got ten men on the line of scrimmage trying to block it to return a punt effectively right there. That time, at least, he secured the football properly. Got what he could get. Terry Sturt making the tackle. All time is out. 9 16 left in the third quarter. It's Michigan 10, Minnesota 7.
Pro-Am Sports, Michigan's hottest sports action every day of the year. Tom Wilcher checks in a tailback for Michigan on first down, 10 yards to go at the Wolverine 25. Wilcher goes to his left and picks up a yard, perhaps two, to near the 27-yard line. Matt Martinez making the tackle. The third quarter statistic, scoring-wise, for Wolverine is just incredible this year. We saw a lot of those against Illinois two weeks ago. Higgins and Perriman have come into the ball game. Jokic checking out, as is Jeff Brown coming to the near sidelines for Michigan. Second down now. McMurtry to the right. Higgins split to the left, short side. Harbaugh back to throw. Throws to the sideline. It's intercepted at the 35-yard line, and he is hit immediately by Perriman. A pass interception for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. And I believe it was Martinez that made the uh, pickoff. And the Gophers get a big break here midway through the third quarter. Well, how about he's going back right now, has plenty of time. Look at all the time he has. He doesn't see Martinez. He's set up in the zone. Boom, right into his hand. Just did not see him. He was standing behind the receiver. That's why he didn't see him. So the Gophers have the ball on the Michigan 36-yard line. Foggy has his team in the wishbone set. Pitches back to Penn. Carrying for the first time today. Gets inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. Tony Gamble in now. Ed Penn, the sophomore from Tampa, Florida. He, like all of these backs, averaging over five yards per carry. That's the first time that the option worked effectively that time. They got a good block on the corner to get outside containment. Foggy read the defense properly, pitched the ball quickly, and Penn just used his speed to get outside. It's a first down at the Michigan 24. And again, it's the West Coast with Carter, a wide receiver to the left. Foggy with a long count. On the option, keeps it. He's at the 20, cuts inside 15. Still on his feet, 10. And down at the 8-yard line by Tony Gant. Ricky Foggy with a brilliant run picks up another first down for the Minnesotans. This is when they're very effective, especially Ricky Foggy. is coming down. The option man, he gets blocked. The pitch man, the man is supposed to get the pitch gets blocked anyhow. Foggy does a nice job, bounces off one tackle, carries one down to the eight-yard line. He is very effective when he's running the option. That's first and goal for the Minnesota Golden Gophers at the nine-yard line. Anderson flanked wide to the left. And again, this crowd of 105,000 is on its feet. Thompson pulls forward to the five-yard line for Minnesota. The Gophers scored first in this one. Took a 7-0 lead. The Wolverines came back to take a 10-7 advantage at halftime. Thus far, there's been no scoring here in the third quarter. But it's the biggest threat of this period for either team. They're both teams keeping the ball on the ground. This quarter's going by in a hurry. There's only seven minutes on the, on the clock right now. Very difficult position to be in when you're on the eight-yard line and you cannot get a first down. The field really shortens up on you. It's second down and goal from the five-yard line for Minnesota. Foggy with his team in the wishbone. Keeps the ball. Touchdown, Minnesota. Ricky Foggy on the option. Bound running room to his left side, and Minnesota goes on top with 6.40 left in the third quarter. It's the Gophers 13, Michigan 10. Yeah, yeah. So the drive for the point will now take place. Will be attempted by Chip Lowmiller. Minnesota, a 25-point underdog with the lead midway through the third period. The spot, the kick by Lowmiller is good. And it is now Minnesota 14, Michigan 10 with 6.40 left in the third quarter. 
So when that score gets announced, the Rocket Nation is going to be a couple of eyebrows that are raised. But what time, really, on, the, on that touchdown, Michigan played it quite well. They just didn't tackle him. And we're going to take a look at it right now. Watch Foggy. He's going to come down here on the option to his left, takes it out of the fullback's hands. And the really, uh, I don't understand, is the tackling right here, number eight. Doug Mallory. Which Mallory, hey. Mallory and Willingham right now in perfect position to make the tackle, and neither does make the tackle. Ran right between them. So it is a 14 deficit that the Michigan Wolverines face. Well, he's very happy right now, Ricky is, but there's a lot of football to be played here in Ann Arbor yet. Eric Campbell and Jamie Morris are going back as a deep man as Low Miller tees the ball up at the 35. Campbell to the left of your screen, Morris to the right, situated at the three yard line. It's going to be interesting to see as we, the ball is blown off to tee by the wind. Uh, when Minnesota did score, Michigan answered right back with a field goal. It's going to be, once again, very interesting to see what this does to the morale of the Michigan football team. You can't take anything away from the Gophers this afternoon. Oh, they sure. have played a gutty brand of football. Big hop, sails into the end zone and out. You know, Larry, they scored both touchdowns off of mistakes, Michigan mistakes, but give them credit, they did take advantage of the mistakes. Some teams do not have that ability. They let those opportunities go by the wayside. Minnesota, a muffed fumble on a punt. And right now, an interception have taken both in for scores. It's a credit to them. And they played sound defensively. They have been hitting out there. Both teams have been hitting out here. Very hard hit football game. Jeff back there with uh, 165 victories. Same as fielding Yost. Has to come from behind to get 166. Morris cuts back to his left, gets out to the 26 yard line. Lost the ball, and Minnesota picks it up, and we'll have the possession. We were screened from the uh, fumble of the ball. Larry Joyner fell on it, and Minnesota gets another big opportunity. It looked like the ground caused the fumble. And that's why we thought the play was dead, and we're going to take a look at it right now. Here's Morris coming to the right. He cuts back right now to elude a tackler. And let's take a look and see what does happen, in fact. Well, it's hard to take a look and see what happens. Looked like the cornerback, Martinez, came up, made a nice pop. But that official's right on it. He says the ball was loose, in fact. I think Mark Dusbavik was the guy that recovered the fumble. Tough call, but the Gophers now have a great opportunity. Boggy back to throw, throwing to the end zone, incomplete. Back defending was Garland Rivers. Pass was intended for Darrell Thompson, but thrown a little high. There's a latest scoring drive for the Gophers, a minute 39 seconds with Boggy taking it five yards. 14 to 10 is the score. Minnesota with 622 left in the third quarter. And the Gophers have the ball at the Michigan 26. You know, a lot of teams do like to take advantage of a mistake and go right up top to try to get a quick six. But Minnesota has not thrown the ball effectively today. Now they put themselves in a difficult position right now. Fog is going to call a timeout because there's some confusion on the field. But now he's in a second and 10 rather than running that option, which was so effective for them on the last series. Very good point. And they spend the timeout to clear things up. This is a situation they have taken advantage of the breaks they had uh, previously. They don't want to blow this one away. 14-10 is the score. 6.22 left in the third quarter. We'll be back in a moment on pro Am Sports. Number one November continues with Michigan's most exciting sports on pass. Next Monday, the 17th, it's HBA Boxing as the Southwest meanest sluggers throw the leather around in the ring. It's back to the Gridiron Tuesday with the Purdue Boilermakers taking their unique brand of football to Iowa City to battle the Hawkeyes. The excitement of the NBA races your way Wednesday as the Pistons aim their attack at the Washington Bullets. Detroit's famed Croc Boxing team is in the spotlight Thursday, throwing their one-two punch at the country's best from downtown Motown. 
town. The boys from the nation's capital sweep into town Friday for more NHL drama against Jacques Demers' high-flying Red Wings. It's back to the hard court of the NBA Saturday with World Be Free trying to light up the scoreboard against the Pistons while Sunday showcases our exclusive CCHA Game of the Week headlining Western Michigan matching up against the Michigan Wolverines from Ann Arbor. Follow Michigan's best sports action throughout the winter on Pass. Pistons and the Bullets will have it live for you from the Capitol Center in Landover. On Wednesday night, following harness racing from Northfield Down, we hope you'll join us here on Pro Am Sports. Right. It's kind of a frustrating afternoon for this man, his assistants, and his team. And the 105,000 on fan here, equally frustrated as the Wolverines trail 14 to 10. Michigan with the uh, defensive assignment now to stop the Golden Gophers deep in Michigan territory. Big hole for Wilson, and he is down to the 17-yard line. Andre McIntyre making the tackle for Michigan. Ball at the 17-yard line. It'll be a third down and uh, about a yard to go for the first down. Well, as they ran so effectively in the first quarter, giving the ball to the fullback, they did it that time. Uh, Michigan was concerned with Foggy. They had the, the end come on down to make sure Foggy didn't have the ball. He didn't have the ball. He gave it to the fullback already. Third and a yard to go for the first down. This is Thompson with a big hole. He's at the 10. First down for Minnesota. Darrell Thompson carrying for first down yardage. Eric Campbell making the tackle. And it'll be just short of the 10 yard line. So the Gophers can pick up a first down without scoring. First and 10 from the 10 and a half yard line. Well, they're doing some work over here on with right tackle, right guard, Holcomb and Hopkins. They're doing a great job right there on the right side for Minnesota right now. That is team of the wishbone. Sliding out to the left, he's got some room, and Bingo bounces off one tackle, and then he is picked up at the seven-yard line, and a diving tackle by Mark Mester. Baki gains about three, second and seven for Minnesota. Here we got the option left again that was successful for them on the last series. Foggy does a nice job, takes a good pop right there, bounces off and tries to get a few more yards, which he does. Second down and seven, the ball at the eight yard line as the Gophers huddle in the 15. Foggy has a pair of tight ends. A wishbone. By a bad cut for Michigan. Long cut for Foggy. Gives to White, bounces off, and then he is hit again. No gain at the eight-yard line. Willingham was the man that finally made the tackle secure at the eight. Now it's third down and seven yards to go. Here's Willingham. That time Michigan had a different look up front defensively anyhow in the sense that their tackle was not head on on the tackle. The offensive tackle is a little bit more into the gap which caused problems on Minnesota's blocking schemes. Jason Bruce the long wide receiver he goes to the long side the right. Foggy looks to throw it's incomplete. It was short hopped in the end zone by Jason Bruce. Incompleted forward pass Eric Campbell was there. And it'll bring up fourth down and decision time for Minnesota. Thus far, no indication they'll go for three. Chip Romiller now checking onto the field. There's nine for 14 in the field goal department this year. His longest kick of the season, 55 yards. This young man is very capable of making this. The angle is to the left. It is not a, an extreme angle. Ball is down. Kick is up. And it is good. And Minnesota tacks on three more. 
And the Gophers now have a 17 to 10 lead over Michigan with three minutes 42 seconds left in the third quarter. So Minnesota taking advantage of each opportunity so far this afternoon and if you're looking for an opportunistic team you'd have to say the Gophers would qualify today. Well right now Michigan is letting Minnesota get into this football game by two mistakes that they've created and uh, this is something that you really do not want to do because they have been playing good defensive football. The offense has taken advantage of Michigan's mistakes and that's why they have 17 points on the board but the defense has stopped Michigan. Three minutes 42 seconds left in the third quarter plenty of time for the Wolverines to get their offense on track but it has been a sputtering attack so far this afternoon. This is a great football game Barry. we didn't know what to expect coming down here as you mentioned 25 point underdogs and uh, somebody forgot to tell Minnesota they're 25 point underdogs they're playing a whale of a football game. Eric Campbell and Jamie Morris are the deep men Campbell to your left. And it'll be Chip Miller to kick it away. The wind uh, again blowing the ball off the tee. Here's the run up by Miller and the uh, line drive wobbly kick. Handled by Campbell. Out to the 30. And drives forward to the 35 yard line. Well, next Sunday, coming up on Pro Am Sports, it's Jackson Action at Northfield Downs beginning at 6.30. Then it's College Hockey USA at 7 o'clock. And at 7.30, we'll be at Yost Ice Arena here in Ann Arbor as the Michigan Wolverines play host to the Western Michigan University Broncos. That'll be the CCHA Game of the Week next Sunday, 7.30, here on Pro Am Sports. Wolverines trail 17 to 10. Tom Wilcher is in at fullback and Michigan puts it into play. Wilcher climbs up over the top and gets out to the 38 yard line. Three and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Mark Dusbavik making the tackle for Michigan. This is a position that Michigan is not familiar with being down by seven points this late in the third quarter. Been a strange game. Minnesota running nearly twice the plays that Michigan ran in the first quarter. It was a reversal of roles in the second quarter, and Minnesota ran more than twice the number of plays here in the third quarter that Michigan has run. And it's been a seesaw game on the scoreboard. Harbaugh on the delay, back to throw, downfield. Caught beautifully by the tight end, Jeff Brown, and down he goes at the 43 yard line. Marcus Bobbick making the tackle for Minnesota. Big game for the Wolverines at the Minnesota 43. Good play action that time. He's got all the time in the world. Goes to the tight end. Had Jokic down the field for a touchdown if he did want to go to him. So right now, it looks like Michigan going to put the ball up in the air. And when they do that, they are effective. Uh, first down for the Wolverines as Jokic comes wide to the right. Greg McMurtry also coming wide to the right. Left end is tight. It's Brown. The whistle. The handoff to White. There you go. There you go. It's down to the 38 yard line in Minnesota territory. Tackle made by J.J. Lennon of the Golden Gophers. They say his knee touched the turf at the 39 yard line. It's been a while since Michigan has won or lost to the Gophers here. 17 to nothing in 1962. That is a long time. The last time that Minnesota has beaten Michigan anywhere was in 77, which is a pretty long time ago also. Harbaugh, bad pitch. Morris chases it down back at the 45. Hemmed in. Gets a block, and down he goes at the 49 in Michigan territory. Steve Franklin made the tackle. And the Wolverines just cannot pull the offense together on a consistent basis. But right now, he pitched the ball before he wanted to pitch the ball. Minnesota's just playing great defense. Donnie, it was number 38, I believe. Bruce, no, that isn't right either. I couldn't catch that number of the defensive end coming down, once again causing that trouble for Michigan. But they had the option right. Bobo did not want to pitch the ball that soon. The ball went. 
Third and 18, Harbaugh back to throw. Throws over the middle, caught by the tight end, Jeff Brown. He's back to the 40-yard line and dropped. The Wolverines trail 17 to 10 with 47 seconds left in the third quarter. Fourth down and about seven yards to go. Robbins checks in to do the punting. The lone safety for Minnesota will be Roselle Richardson. Richardson standing at the 10 yard line. Robin stands at his 46. Here's the kick. A high floater. Goes into the end zone. So we brought back out to the 20 yard line. And here are the boos right now. What he was trying to do is, I think, smart football that time. The general, he was kicking into the wind. What he was hoping for, maybe that the ball would get down inside the 10, playing field position. It didn't occur. The punter just got a little bit too much of the football and it went in for touchback. There's Mr. Robbins right there. Not real happy about what happened. Minnesota will have the ball at the 20 yard line. With a 17 to 10 lead and 17 seconds left in the third quarter. Minnesota's in a too tight end offense right now. They'll probably use that option, which has been very effective for them. Foggy gives to Thompson, and he goes no place. The young freshman wrapped up around the shoe tops as he approached the line of scrimmage and fell right at the 20-yard line. Nice play by Herman. It'll be second down and 10. As we take a look at him, he is a nice-looking athlete. Big fella. 6-2-2. No. 4 That's the end of quarter number three. Minnesota 17, Michigan 10. A shocker underway in Ann Arbor. Bo Schembechler and his close aide, Elliot Uzelak, parading up and down the near sidelines, looking for the key that will unlock a mystery that has given Minnesota a 17 to 10 lead as we approach the final quarter. Well, you know, the, both teams are blocking well, they're tackling well, they're hitting each other. It's been a, a hard-fought game. The problem is that Michigan's made some mistakes, and Minnesota has taken advantage of them right now, and this is something that hasn't happened to Michigan. In the third quarter, Michigan, total offense, 39 yards. That is a surprise. Minnesota, 74. Second down, 10 yards to go for the Gophers. Foggy rolling out to the left, hemmed in. He's in trouble, reverses his field, and loses his block, gets out to the 25, and he is cut down at the 28-yard line. Dieter Heron coming up to make the tackle. Foggy almost picked up the necessary yardage for the first down, and it looked as though he'd be a drop for a big loss. Picked up nine yards. It'll be third and one. Dieter is hurt right now. Foggy's got all the time in the world. He's trying to go out to his left, to his Hendrick Anderson. He's not available to him. And here comes Dieter. And it's almost to the fact like, what happens is his own, de back, his own defensive back. back hit him in the knee. Dieter Heron being helped to the near sideline. Third down and one. Foggy has his team in the wishbone with a pair of tight ends. Penn dives forward and gets the first down for Minnesota. It's out to the 32-yard line where the Gophers have another first down. Herman making the tackle for Michigan. And so often on a play like that where the defensive team is up on the line of scrimmage trying to prevent a third and one, that went almost for six points if he just got through the line of scrimmage without getting tripped up. Clark Battle goes wide to the left for Minnesota. Anderson is split to the right. Foggy checking out a 5-2. Fakes the handoff. Turns the corner. He's out to the 40-yard line, and he has ridden down on the far side of the field. Wolverine sprawled all over the field, but the tackle was made by Bissell. Very smart on the part of Minnesota right now. They're running the 
their option very effectively right now. And another thing they put into it right now, another option, I should say. They split out two wide receivers right now because they feel that their offensive line is doing such a good job controlling the line of scrimmage that they can do this and run the option. What they're doing is spreading out the defense. A well, Michigan player that is down on the far side. Very difficult to tell who it is. I believe it's Fulkertsma. It is. I believe you're right. I think he just got the wind knocked out of him. That's the story. We have 13-39 left in the ball game. We'll be back in a moment on Pro Am Sports. The Detroit Red Wings have come to pass, and that means the Pass Stadium Club is going to the Red Wing games this season. On Wednesday, November 19th, the Wings face off against the New Jersey Devils. The package includes a $12 reserve seat, a Red Wing program with press notes, a Red Wing pennant, and a post-game party with beer, pop, munchies, and some of the players, all for only $16.50 a person. To order tickets, send check or money order to Pass Stadium Club, 500 Stevenson Highway, Troy, Michigan, 48083, or call Pass at 583-7600. The excitement of the NBA comes your way in November on Pass. Catch Isaiah, Bill, and the rest of the gang as Chuck Daly develops his strategic attack against some of the best opposition in the league. So make plans now to join us throughout November for all the slams, all the jams of the NBA as the Pistons strut their stuff in the explosive Central Division. The Pistons take their act on the road to battle the physical bullets live from Landover. Catch all the action Wednesday night on Michigan Sports Source Pass. 17 to 10 Minnesota leads Michigan with 1339 left in the game and Minnesota has the ball at its own 40 yard line second down and two White has checked into the ball game replacing Fulford Snow who left after having the win knocked out of him. Doggy with the wishbone. Gives to Thompson and he struggles forward for about four yards and another first down for Minnesota. The rushing game has been treating Minnesota very well in the second half. Oh, it certainly has, and I was just going to mention that, pal, that this is exactly what they want to do right now. They have a seven-point lead. There's 13 and a half minutes left to go in the football game. What they want to do, they've just accomplished two first downs. They want to try to keep the ball on the ground, eat up the clock, and get first downs. Those are Thompson's statistics this afternoon as Mel Anderson goes wide to the left. Otto is split to the right. Foggy a couple of steps back, pitches back to Thompson, comes to the short side, and he is written down at the 49-yard line, lost the ball out of bounds. It will be Minnesota's ball. Tony Gant making the tackle on the big freshman back from Rochester, Minnesota. He had 1,074 yards rushing starting today's play. Apparently there was a flag on the play because the discussion is going on on the near sideline. It would indicate that Michigan was offside. Well, it's no longer an indication. It's a fact. <laughs> well, they are helping Minnesota's cause right now. So instead of being second and six, it's going to be first and five. 13.04 left to be played. Still plenty of time for the Wolverines to come back. Minnesota, one of the surprise teams in the Big Ten this year, winning the uh, first three games in the league against lesser competition, of course, but then being blasted by Ohio State and Michigan State, coming back with a win over Wisconsin last week, has given Michigan all it has wanted this afternoon. First and five. Foggy gives to Penn. Nothing there. He is stopped at the 49 yard line by Mark Messner. It'll be second down and five yards to go. The focus is back into the ball game. That's a good sight for Michigan fans. Let's take a look right now. Michigan does a nice job. There's block stuffing the hole right there. And there is nothing available for Minnesota that time. Mal Anderson comes very wide to the right on second down. Doggy again checking it off at the line of scrimmage. Gives to Penn, lost the ball, and I believe Michigan recovered. 
at the 50-yard line, Billy Harris. Well, the Wolverines force their own break and take the ball at the midfield strike. This perhaps could be the turning point of the football game. There's a happy young man. Dave Fulkertsma, number 93. And as you can see, it was a bad handoff that time. Dave falls right on the football, catches it in the air, and matter of fact. Yep. Harris jolted it free, and Fulkertsma made the catch. So it's a first down for Michigan at the 49-yard line. White sticks his head down, and he Ooh. is really blasted. Ooh, there is some hit, as we've been mentioning, going on. Usually on turnovers, Michigan likes to go up top to Higgins or Jokish or one of the wideouts who's ever in the football game at the particular time. I think they're going to have to throw the football against this Minnesota team. Now they have Perriman and Jokish both checking in. Higgins has come out of the game. McMurtry is coming wide to the left. Jokic is split to the right to short side on second down. Reverse, McMurtry going to the right, cuts up field and is cut down at the 45-yard line. That'll be third down and four yards to go. Is Bobic making the tackle for Minnesota? Bobbitt did an excellent job of staying home right here. As you can take a look at the top of your screen, he's going nowhere. He's, his responsibility is containment. Nobody's getting outside of him. He does a great job of tackling one-on-one. -on -one. Third down for Michigan at the 46-yard line. Eyeball takes a look. He is hit. And they may get him for grounding here. No, no flags. Holy smokes. He was all wrapped up. He was in the grass. There's no question about that. And the Wolverines may have escaped, although it brings up the fourth down, so it doesn't make a whole lot of difference, I guess. Steve this, Thompson, watch this. this. This is what you call old fish and home cooking. He is definitely in the grass. He's four yards in the grass for the <laughs> defender. Incompleted pass. To who? Yeah. I do not know. <laughs> Robbins will attempt his fourth punt of the afternoon. He's had a good day. And this is Roselle Richardson standing on the 10-yard line for Minnesota. Good snap. And a dirty punt. Coming straight down and kicks into the end zone. Well, Michigan creating its own break, unable to take advantage of it. Could not pick up the necessary yardage for the first down and turns it back to Minnesota. Go, 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 lad, play top. 10 minutes, 33 seconds left in the game. The Gophers lead it 17 to 10. As we take a look right now at Robbins on the sideline, he has kicked two unbelievable punts two consecutive times right now. Minnesota is on offense once again. 10 minutes and uh, 10 and a half minutes to go in the game. They want to get first downs. They want to keep the ball on the ground. As I mentioned on the last series, they certainly do not want to fumble. Now Anderson is flanked wide to the right. Foggy back to throw. Now deals it off on the far side to Wilson. Up the sideline, a flag is down. Wilson stopped at the 35, but there's going to be a clipping call back at the 22-yard line. Well, they're all happy right now, but it's illegal use of hands. I don't know if you're going to call it. What happened was a Minnesota ball player pushed a Michigan ball player in the back, in the small of the back. The official was right on the call, so it's either going to be a clip or illegal use of hands in the back, one or the other. But nevertheless, it's going to put Minnesota in critical. As you take a look right at the top of the screen, it's going to come right here, right there. You see it right there? The Michigan defender turned his back on, on the Minnesota ball player. There's your clip, and there's bad field position for Minnesota. And he races a big gain and moves it back to the 12-yard line. 10-24 left to be played. Go 
Gophers making a couple of changes. Jason Bruce comes in. He wears number 38. He's the wide receiver for the Gophers. He, along with Mel Anderson, come wide to the right. And they also have a receiver flank wide to the left. Foggy turns, gives to Wilson, gets to the 15 yard line. It'll be second down and 15 yards to go for the Gophers. Mark Mester making the tackle for Michigan. On that, on that particular play, Minnesota went to a three wide out formation, hoping to spread the field and get the quick hit it to the fullback up the middle. It did not work, but it is a good call because you certainly do not want Foggy in a situation of third and 15 to put the ball up in the air, or first and 15 anyhow. It is now second and 15 at the 15-yard line. Foggy being rushed, looks, throws, incomplete. Intended for Dennis Carter. It was a little bit too high for him as a sophomore from Miami. And he could not hold it, it fell incomplete. So now it'll be third down at 15. Big play here if the Wolverines can keep Minnesota deep and they can come out of here with some very fine field position following the punt. Exactly, and defensively on situations like this, Michigan has been blitzing. They've been sending cornerbacks, they've been sending linebackers, they've been sending everybody. It's going to be interesting to see what Minnesota calls. Maybe that swing screen or a draw play is the proper call right now. A safe play, but a play that possibly will break it for you. Jason Bruce is wide to the right. Foggy fakes the draw, back the throw, to the side, Jason Bruce is open. It's a first down all the way out to the 41-yard line. Eric Campbell making the tackle, and the Gophers get off the hook. Unbelievable. As I mentioned, Michigan all day long has been putting heat on the Minnesota quarterback. Right now, we do not see any pressure on him. He has all day to throw. They're in a zone back there. Receiver just goes down the field, finds the open area, pulls up in between the linebacker and the corner, and there's your first down. Jason Bruce on the receiving end. A big, big play for the Gophers. First down at the Minnesota 41-yard line. Carter is right to the left. Otto is split to the right on first down. Straight into the middle, not much there, up to the 45-yard line. Andy Muller making the tackle. Kevin Wilson has had a busy afternoon carrying the ball nine times for 51 yards. It was interesting on that play. Willingham, the linebacker for Michigan, popped foggy a little bit. He's got to remember, he's still in this football game. Once he handles the football, once he hands the football off, this immediately the player stopped. Second down. Now it's seven yards to go at the 45. Hash marks near side. They have tight ends. Wishbone. Michigan with six men on the line of scrimmage now. Foggy sliding down the left side. He is hit. Pitches back on the left side, and he is cut down at the 46-yard line. McIntyre made the initial hit on Foggy, but then he pitched, and Willingham made the tackle on the far side of the field. Marcus Evans. Great play right there. Here's McIntyre. He gets a piece of Foggy. Foggy gets the ball away. And there's a good job over there by Willingham. Stays home. Plays the pitch perfectly. So it's another big third down play facing Michigan's defensive unit. Third and five at the 46-yard line. Foggy back to the throw. Being lost. He's hit. On loads. Incomplete at the 49-yard line. Looks it like it's intended for Mel Anderson. Moeller had Foggy wrapped up. Foggy got rid of the ball, and Anderson very nearly made a circus catch. It's going to be a holding call, though. Personal foul. Against the Gophers. So let's take a look to see where we can... Where is the personal foul? I don't see anybody hitting anybody, that's for sure, because they got Foggy on the ground. Look at that pass. And look at this. Almost completed it. Well, as we mentioned, Ricky Foggy, he is an exceptional athlete. That is when he's most dangerous, when he starts to run around in that pocket. Well, the decision here, personal foul, was a, a, would have been a fourth and five situation. The penalty is declined. 
Andy Moeller is talking about it. The personal foul penalty has been declined. And uh, Michigan wants the football. Well, you have to decline it. That's a smart right. call because you certainly do not want the team to have another opportunity to get a possible first down, and sillier things have happened. Seven minutes, 17 seconds left in the ball game. 17 to 10, Minnesota leads Michigan. Brett Herbel will punt from his 32 to Tony Gant, who stands on his 15. Michigan sending everybody almost got it. Comes off to the right side, bounces straight into the air, and comes down on the 24-yard line. Zell, Michigan will take over the football with 7.09 left in the game. It's Minnesota 17, Michigan 10. Seventeen to ten, Minnesota with the advantage. Seven minutes nine seconds left to be played in the ball game. Jim Harbaugh trying to warm up, get the blood flowing for the final surge in a bid to come from behind. The Wolverines came back from an early deficit, took the lead, but the Gophers overcame the Michigan advantage. First down for Michigan at the 25. Yelke split to the left. McMurtry flank to the right. High ball back to throw. Over the middle. Caught by Morris at the 30-yard line. A gain of about five. Smart selection that time by the quarterback. What he was trying to do, he goes wide out on the far end of the field right there. But they were playing his zone. The linebacker had a good drop that time. Jim thought it'd be a little dangerous throwing the ball in that direction. Went to his secondary receiver. Morris coming out of the backfield. Pickens into the game. Just put left in. Harbaugh on the draw to Morris. He's out to the 35-yard line. And very close to a first down. Clock is running. Less than six and a half minutes remaining. And time does become a factor now. It's going to be just a shade short of a first down, I believe. Third down, uh, Jim Harbaugh is asking that the chain be brought in. Got a little bit different uh, angle here, but it appears from here that it's a touch short. I thought, he went, I thought he made it to the 35. I thought it was a bad mark. It is a first down for Michigan. Morris with 12 carries, 49 yards, has caught five passes for 63, a total of 112 yards in total offense for Jamie today. Higgins out of the ball game, Jokic back in. First down for Michigan at the Wolverine 35-yard line. McCurtry goes wide to the right, Jokic is split to the left. I formation as Harbaugh steps under the center. Harbaugh back to throw. Look, he's throwing on for McMurtry. Got it at the 35-yard line. Greg McMurtry with his second beautiful catch of the afternoon falls at the 35 at Michigan. Gobbles up big yardage, 30, to carry it into Minnesota territory. Well, McGee that time, number four for Minnesota's playing a little game with Harbaugh. He was trying to, he was going to double on the outside on that young man, but he came up on a line of scrimmage and was going to go play the tight end. That's why he had single coverage. The pass was a rope right on the money, and then we have a first down on the 35-yard line. Carlos McGee is the Minnesota player that is shaken up. McMurtry has caught three passes this afternoon. Two of them sensational grabs. He has a total of 51 yards gained to receive it. The young fellow that had a chance to sign with the Boston Red Sox, the first round choice of the Red Sox, decided to come to the University of Michigan. Five minutes, 53 seconds remain to be played in this ball game. Michigan has moved to the Minnesota 35. Time is out on the field as a result of the injury to 
Carlos McGee. Michigan has all three of its timeouts remaining. Coming up on Thursday here on Pro Am Sports, it opens up with harness racing, followed at 7.30 by Croc Boxing. That'll be live from Kobo Arena here on Pro Am Sports, and it will feature Hurley Sneed. You'll see it all here on Pass on Thursday evening. We invite you to join us. Maybe we can see in this replay, Skip, how he yeah. was injured. He's going to go underneath him, and yeah. his own player looks like hits him in the back of the head or the ribs. Looks like he's going to get up, and that's good news. He's favoring that right leg. Yeah. But you know something, Larry? The field is so cold right now also. If you come down wrong on the field, the field can cause an injury right now also. So McKee goes off. It looks as though it's the right knee that is bothering him. First down for Michigan at the Minnesota 35. Jokic, the lone wide receiver. He is flanked to the long side to the left. Tips going back to Jimmy Morris. Turns the corner and gets about three. Button down at the 32 or three yard line by Larry Joyner. The yards have been coming very, very difficult to run on Minnesota today. They've had success throwing against them, but not running against them. Minnesota for the season has been allowing 235 yards on the ground. So it has been a better defensive game against the rush today than it has been during the course of the year for Minnesota. Now whistles are sounding. Minnesota was yeah. called by Minnesota. Excuse me, Larry. Minnesota had to take a timeout. They were one player short. Five minutes and two seconds left to be played in the game. The Gophers now with just one timeout remaining. Michigan has all three left. That could also be critical for Minnesota. This is a wasted timeout in the sense that they might need a timeout if they get the ball back and Michigan does score. But once again, you certainly do not want to give up a touchdown defensively with only 10 men on the field. The final home appearance for a number of Wolverines today. The final home game of the 1986 season. And this is one of the seniors concluding a brilliant career here at Michigan. Jim Harbaugh. You can hear in the background the uh, public address announcer naming off the seniors who are concluding their home careers today. Michigan has a net total of 120 yards rushing this afternoon. Jamie Morris, 13. Harbaugh, 15. <laughs> 189 yards passing for Michigan. That has been where the success has been. Dumped off, bad pass. Uh, actually, White got tied up with one of his linemen, Michael Daines, and uh, there just wasn't much going on there. No, there wasn't. It was a screen play, and um, really, Minnesota didn't put enough pressure on it. They had to let go of it quickly. But Daines got in the way of White trying to come out of the backfield to try to get that ball. And the good thing about that, how about he released the ball quickly so he was not sacked. This is definitely a third down, a critical third down. And six, they've only been three for 11, but they like to go to Higgins on situations like this. It's third down and nine for Michigan. The ball at the Minnesota 34-yard line. Yoke is split to the left, McMurtry wide to the left. Five ball straight back, dumps it over, intended for a fight, and it's intercepted. No, it is not. It was trapped at the 27-yard line. Going to bring up fourth down. Harbaugh's feeling a little pressure back here right now. The pocket's getting a little crowded there. Tries to dump it off. And there it is. It does hit the ground before the linebacker for Minnesota can. This is interesting. A fourth down at seven, fourth down and nine, and they're going to go for it. Four minutes, 53 seconds left to be played in this game. Michigan shooting the works here. Fourth and nine, Harbaugh back to throw. 
Throws over the middle, and it's caught by McMurtry at the 21st down, Michigan. You talk about confidence. You have to remember, ladies and gentlemen, this is only a freshman. What confidence Bo shows in this young man. He has made three key catches this afternoon, the second one of this drive. And Michigan is still alive with a first down at the 20. Well, we can see there's no pressure right there. Off the there is a little pressure. But a great job right there getting the football off. A little button hook right there. He knew what he had to get, and he got it accomplished. Higgins is split to the left. McMurtry wide to the right, the long side of the field. Harbaugh back to throw. Lux throws, knocked down at the line of scrimmage. It was Uncleberg that got in there and knocked the play down at the line of scrimmage. So it'll be second down and 10. Four twenty-two left to be played in the game. Harbaugh with a quick trip to the sideline. Returns to the huddle as you look at the Minnesota side of the field. Higgins split to the left as Michigan comes to the line of scrimmage. McCurtry is flanked to the right. Harbaugh on the draw to Morris up the middle of the 10. Cuts to his left down to the seven yard line. First and goal for the Wolverines. Excellent call that time by Michigan. Excellent, excellent call. Minnesota's putting on a lot of heat on the quarterback. One way to slow it down. Draw, screen, they elected to draw. Watch it right now. Lyman do a nice job of setting up their blocks. And right now, that is an exceptional hole right now to run through. Charles McCree made the touchdown saving tackle on Jamie Morris as the Wolverines come to the line of scrimmage with two tight ends. A wishbone, first and goal from the seven yard line. Michigan trail 17 to 10. Harbaugh waiting for the snap. Turns, fakes the handoff. He's hit. Drop for a loss back at the 10 yard line. So Michigan now looks at a second and goal from the 10 yard line with 341 left. This is an exceptional play by Minnesota. He puts the ball in Perryman's stomach, he has trouble with the ball, almost fumbles the ball. That is why the pursuit of the defense got to him. Almost a fumble that time. This has been a 10 play Michigan drive, the longest drive for the Wolverines this afternoon. Harbaugh back to throw. Lux throws, completes the pass to the tight end, Jeff Brown, at the two yard line. Now it'll be third and goal from the two. This is exciting. <laughs> Higgins checks in. Thomas Wilcher comes onto the field. On third and goal from the two-yard line as Michigan tries to come from behind. Double tight end formation. Perriman dives over the top but is stopped at the one-yard line. Is this a football game? Right now they're on about the one-yard line. It's fourth and goal. They're going to have to go for it right now. And they elect to call a timeout to discuss the matter. Good idea. <laughs> Two minutes, 28 seconds left. Harbaugh comes to the near sideline. The entire defensive unit for Minnesota goes to the far side of the field. I'd like to take a minute to thank everyone who's worked on today's telecast. The executive producer of Pro-Am Sports is William Glenn. The senior producer of College Football 86, Michael Smith. Our producer and director on this afternoon's telecast, Jerry Hausfeld. Today's coordinating producer, Jim Holly, and our associate producer, Frank Albin. Our production coordinator is Kristen Studebaker, and the production manager of past, Christine Acovetti. Thanks to everybody working on the crew in the field and in the truck for another job well done today. Thank you, gentlemen and ladies. You have made this very easy for Larry and myself. It is fourth down and goal from the one yard line. On the third down situations for Michigan, this half, the Wolverines are 0 for 5 when trying to pick up the first down. In fourth down situations, they have converted their only attempt. That's a, they that's a better, <laughs> that's that's a better down. <laughs> Well, coach, what do we do? 
Which coach are you talking to? <laughs> There's only two of us here. <laughs> they jam it up inside defensively, I guess, and uh, Bo, well, he I, likes to go up the middle, but we'll see. Well, we've seen many times the option on this play with that young man taking it in on, a, I like on the action play. Though. But they, as they say, the shortest distance between two points is this great line. They Terrible sure do. tried that routine <laughs> on third down, didn't make it. Fourth down, less than a yard to go for the touchdown. Michigan Trail 17 to 10 with 2.28 left in the ball game. The ends are tight. Wishbone, Harbaugh under the center. Long count, turns, gives, White ball! He lost the ball! He got in for the touchdown, however. Oh, is this a call right here, folks? It is a touchdown for Michigan. The Wolverines are back to within one. The ball popped away, was picked up by a Minnesota player at the 10 yard line. Holy smokes. 17 to 16. And are we going to have to take a look at this? Welcher was banged up on the play. He is coming to the near sideline. Let's take a look at it right now, folks. Coming right into your living room. Is he up and over? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I don't want to make that call. Well, all he has to do is get the ball to cross the plane of the goal line. It hadn't crossed very far, and it hadn't stayed there very long. <laughs> Let's go for the extra point to try the game. Mike Gillette will attempt the conversion. The spot, the kick, up, and good. And the Wolverines have come back to tie it at 17-17 with 2.26 left to be played. Well, the Gophers have given them a battle. The Wolverines would not give up. And they've come back to gain a tie late in the game. All right, this is a better angle for us to take a look at this right now. Is he over the goal line? Is he not? Whoa. I'll tell you what. I I, I think the official did make the proper call. I should take a look at it at that time. He's he's right down the line. He's right down the line, looking at the whole play, and he was coming, came running right in from the bottom part of your screen, and said, "Yes, he was over." So we've got to take him for his work. It's been kind of an exciting conclusion oh. here, hasn't it? It certainly has. If we take a look at the clock right now, two minutes and 26 seconds left. As you can see, Michigan has two timeouts, which is very important right now. Uh, we did see on an early, earlier in the game on after a touchdown, they had, they recovered the football on a kickoff, which they have done three times this particular year. They like to kick the ball to their right on a, like a chip shot type of situation, and they have the speed on the outside to run underneath the ball. Let's see if they do that right now, or elect to kick the ball into the end zone and make Minnesota make first down. The game time scoring drive, the longest of the afternoon for the Wolverines. A well-conceived drive covering 75 yards, needing 13 plays. McMurtry is in on the kickoff team here. As Pat Moons gets ready to do the kicking for the Wolverines. And it's a high end over end kick straight down the middle of the field. Small has it. Comes out to the 20. 25 and stopped at the 28 yard line. Minnesota has just one timeout remaining. Two minutes, 20 seconds left to be played. A lot riding on this one. Next week, it's at Columbus, the battle for the Big Ten Championship. A tie would severely hamper the Wolverines' attempt for a Big Ten and National Championship. Well, they're in a wishbone with a double wide. It's going to be interesting to see if they throw the ball or are satisfied with a 17. 17 times. Foggy pitches. Penn is belted for a loss back at the 27 by Garland Rivers. And more importantly, the clock is stopped. He went out of bounds after being hit by Rivers. 2.14 left. That was a pop. 
second down and 11 for Minnesota. Another down. What they've chose to do on defense in situations like this is to send people. I don't know if Bo is going to take that chance right now, but they have sent linebackers and corners. Jason Bruce is wide to the right. Black here to the left for the Gophers. Hand off to Thompson. Big room out to the 40, and he is upended there, but he picks up a first down. Garland Rivers making the tackle on the big tailback. Another first down for Minnesota. Here it is. It's like a sprint roll right here. He comes on. It's wide open right there. Andy Mola over pursued a minute. Thompson does a great job getting a first down. The clock is stopped. Their kicker has the ability to make a 50-yarder. He has done so this year, but he is kicking into the wind. We have to be aware of that factor. First down at the 40-yard, one-yard line in Mich Minnesota territory. Michigan set up defensively with a four-man front. Boggy pitches back to Thompson. Cuts up field to the 43-yard line. A minute 35 left in the game. John Willingham making the tackle. Well, nobody's using it. We have three timeouts on the board. Two for Michigan, one for Minnesota. Nobody's elected to use those. Uh, it looks like we might just see a 17-17 tie. Thompson has carried 13 times this afternoon for 55 yards for the Gophers. Second down, nine, a minute six left in the ball game. Into the middle goes Kevin White. Andy Moeller wraps him up at the 45-yard line. It'll be third down and about six yards to go. This 47 is seconds left, and now time is called by Michigan. This is unbelievable to my thinking that Minnesota has really nothing to lose in a situation like this. They've gained the respect of everybody across the country by tying the score late in the fourth quarter or having the game tied anyhow. Why they would not throw the football, enhancing their position to maybe get a field goal to win this game is very, very surprising to me. The only factor may be that they're trying to preserve their standing to the Big Ten race, although I'm not sure the third, that or fourth place, yeah. Yeah, third or fourth place makes that much difference. But uh, it's an interesting point that you raise. Well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Very exciting football game, though, something that I don't think anybody across the land has expected. 17-17, a tie with 47 seconds left. Minnesota does have the football in a third and sixth situation. In Michigan, a 25-point favorite coming in. A few nickels may exchange hands this afternoon. Absolutely. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the University of Michigan and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our past subscribers. Any use or reproduction of this broadcast without the express written consent of Pro-Am Sports is strictly prohibited. Seventeen, seventeen, tie, 47 seconds left in the game. Third down and five for Minnesota. Foggy changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Gives to Thompson. He's out to the 50, fights his way to the 48, and very close to a first down, and may have reached first down territory. I think he had great second and third effort on his part. Michigan player Mike Messner slow in getting up. Ooh. Is this going to be close, this measurement? Let's take a look at the outstanding job offense. The guards coming around. Thompson does an excellent job. Look at this legs. He just keeps on driving, keeps on driving, trying to get to those stakes. And it's a first down for Minnesota with 42 seconds left in the game. And you pointed out earlier that Chip Lowmiller has a pretty good leg. He has kicked a successful field goal from 55 yards out. Keeping that in mind, the Gophers are getting closer to his distance. They still have a few more yards to pick up. They'll try it here as Foggy is back to throw. Now he's going to run. He's at the 40. Cuts to his right at the 35. Downfield to the 30. The 25 to 20. And out of bounds at the 17-yard line with 20 seconds remaining. 
and I'll tell you something. The wide receiver, Anderson, number 89, makes an absolute heady play on this on this play. And we're going to see it right here on it. Well, we can't see it at the end. Right here. He does it. He likes not to block the Michigan defender right coming into your screen right here in Garland Rivers. Just nudges him a little bit, knocks him off stride, and they're able to pick up a good 10 to 12 more yards. Gant shoving him out of bounds, but not till he reached the 17 yard line. Still 20 seconds left, but now the Gophers are in a great position to pull off a major upset this afternoon. First down. Bogey gives to Thompson on his feet in the middle of the field of the 15 yard line. 14 seconds left. Well, that might be the last play before you see the kick. Very smart play. They run the ball to the left, get it in the middle of the field. And right now, we're going to see a field goal. The clock stopped with a timeout, the final timeout for Minnesota, with three seconds left in the game. It will be attempted by Chip Lowmiller. He has kicked one from 55 yards earlier this season. Coming into this afternoon's game, he had nailed nine of 14. Unbelievable football game. It would rank as one of the big upsets of the season, undoubtedly, with Michigan ranked number two in the nation coming in. Minnesota rebounding after two blasts, one at the hands of Ohio State, 33-0, and at the hands of Michigan State, 52-23, and coming on the heels of a 27-20 victory over Wisconsin a week ago. You know, as we mentioned in the open, Larry, you did ask me the question, would Michigan be looking ahead to Ohio State in that run for the Roses? And it's not so much I think that Michigan came out flat today, is that Minnesota took the game away from them. I think that's a pretty accurate assessment. Chip Lowmiller will attempt to win it for Minnesota. A 31-yard field goal attempt. And he got it. It's 20 to 17 with no time on the clock. Minnesota pulls a major upset here against the University of Michigan on this cloudy, cool afternoon in Ann Arbor. A tremendous performance by the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Right now, the little brown, little brown jug <laughs> returns to Minneapolis. Some of these fellows didn't know what the little brown jug was. It has been a long time since the Gophers had that jug in its possession, or in their possession. But it was a tremendous performance and a very disappointing loss for the University of Michigan here this afternoon. So now a victory at Ohio State becomes uh, quite imperative next week. It certainly does. A look at the winning three points. Good snap, good kick, right down the middle. There wasn't even a question. And there's the call. And the official's ready to run out of the ballpark. Chip Lowmiller wins one for the Minnesota Golden Gophers here this afternoon. It was a seesaw affair that you never felt that Minnesota had complete control of this game. You never felt that Michigan was ever out of this game. You always felt that the Wolverines would ultimately put it all together and come back and win it. They did come back to tie it, but they just couldn't get this, the scoring punch that they needed to win the ball game. Well, the story of this whole particular game is very simple. That is the only drive, really, that Minnesota took down the field and scored on. The other drives, the 17 points that are on the board for Minnesota, came off of Michigan mistakes. Uh, buffed punt, an interception and a fumble and that's how they scored 17 points is three points a very important three points an unbelievable really last drive last series it was just an unbelievable call a third and six a young freshman from Rochester Minnesota kept his wheels running got the first down by inches there a foggy breaks out of the pocket runs down the sideline to about the 12 15 yard line and then we see the kick that wins the football game unbelievable stunning and there is a Minnesota victory. So the Gophers record now jumps a bit. 
to five and three in the Big Ten and Michigan with its first loss of the season. Now six and one in the Big Ten Conference. The stunner, the Wolverines will have to pull themselves together. That shouldn't be much of a problem. They get ready to go for next Saturday's engagement with Ohio State at Columbus. Michigan rushed for 132 yards this afternoon, passed for 204, total yardage 336. Minnesota rushed for 211, passed for just 90, that total 301 in total offense for the Gophers. 20 to 17, our final. Minnesota wins it. We'll be back with a wrap up in just a moment on Pro Am Sports. Pro Am Sports coverage of College Football 86 is brought to you by Highland Superstores. Highland, everything you never 